three, two, one, zero. Hello, everybody. Why is that ringing? Oh, it happened to be scheduled for 11 a.m. for an alarm. Hello, good morning. Welcome to you. Saturday morning, 11 a.m., November 20th, 2021. We got some people in the chat room. I I don't know if we got people waiting in, on Zoom. Uh, Zoom's going to open up pretty soon. If you have the credentials and want to come in, I think we're going to have a new face in Zoom today. Uh, let's see. Are there any waiting? Nope, nobody waiting. So, do I have any business to cover? I guess the uh, potential of what we may do today, if we want to get into something computers, is I got a couple new computers here. I had a video out recently. There's somebody chiming in. I had a video out recently where I was ordering a computer for one of my brothers, a Dell computer, brand new. It was for Tom. And I realized that Dell and HP had some great prices. Well, while I was poking around in HP, I noticed that there's a very inexpensive brand new Chromebook. So I almost ordered that, figuring I would tinker around with it. Because you know I've got these computers over here that I've been fussing with for a while, trying to get a Chrome operating system on them. So then it dawned on me, you know what? I can buy computers and try them out and return them. So then instead of buying from H, the, Chrome, the inexpensive, steeply reduced price Chromebooks on HP, I found that they were much cheaper than that on Amazon. So I bought two Chromebooks. My intention with these is to try them out, figure out how Chrome operating system is supposed to work when it's on a computer that was designed for, I've got nobody for these computers, these two exact same models. I don't know, it was 120 bucks, 130 bucks, something like that. And they, they, they're they in HP boxes, HP Chromebook boxes. So I'm, I don't know, if, I'm not sure if they're new. That's been hard to understand in Amazon recently. And what I think I'll do is, is try to sign on to the account that I was creating for these all-in-one PCs so, so I could see how it's supposed to operate. And maybe that'll give me some guidance on the other computers. Or maybe we just go with these computers for that client who has the apartment buildings. And we would add, I, was, I was reluctant to do laptops there, but I think if I actually mount them under the table with regular monitor, keyboard, and mouse, they're not going to walk away. Problem with that is how do you turn them on if they're mounted under the table? Uh, another little piece of business. I'm not sure what's going to happen with this. In our last live stream, last Saturday, after I ended the live stream, I went to remove my earbuds and realized I didn't. I wasn't wearing them during that Zoom session. And so I went back and, and watched the video and listened to it, and it sounded okay. You guys know, for those of you who have been watching for a while <laughs> on my live stream, you know how tiring those, those ear... Um, I just said the right word. Now I'm not thinking of it. Ear, not plugs, whatever. Uh, they, they, they really wear out over a period of time. Well, in the past, when I have some Zoom callers in, if I wasn't wearing those and the sound's coming over my speakers, the Zoom audio would be, get captured by the microphone for YouTube, and it was just it was horrible. But it seems to be working okay now. I'm going to go take a look at, at, at chat and catch up with the chat room and then we'll go uh bring some people in on zoom let's see i'm gonna i'm gonna come up here towards uh the top of the chat and see who what we got so now it's, uh, sometimes you guys are communicating back and forth with each other you know i'm gonna put that on on camera you know so if you're saying things that you don't want on camera you should go back and and remove them and that's fine with me i don't mind that if you do it I haven't really found anything that I considered objectionable anyway. Uh, let's see, so, something going on here about a low rider dually truck. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet that's, I'll bet that, I don't know if that's a joke or what. Yeah, because Chris is saying, what is that? Yeah, so this is uh, some kind of ongoing, probably an ongoing joke going on, on with them. The people that are in the chat room here are often interacting with each other on Carrie Holzman's channels and maybe other channels, I don't know. 
Hi, Chris explaining a dually is a truck with four back wheels and two on the front. Not meant to be a low rider, but it looks really cool when they when that is a low rider. Ah, uh, Black Watch Tech Chris. Uh, Ken is Filipino, not Chicano, so no low riders, please. Well, I think I think Ken's wife is uh, Filipino. I not aware not aware that Ken is. It's meant for heavy pulling. I, he was looking for a truck. I was only trying to help him. Sorry not to make it tonight. Oh, Darren's not going to make it tonight. Oh, so sad to hear that, Darren. Well, he says tonight. It's morning for me, um, 11 a.m. that I started. And where he's at, I uh, let's see. I don't think it's Canada. He's 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 on the other side of the globe, isn't he? Or maybe maybe. Um, no, I think it's in um, um, great, um, great Kingdom. Why? Why? Okay, today's going to be a problem with me and words. That's not right. United? No. Over there. Uh, why not my little Smurf town meeting? Oh yeah, I check from time to time. Ken's gonna, uh, uh, Chris. I will check from time to time. Here I am in the final stages of Gary's project. I actually have all three components now, putting them together and making adjustments. Well, so Ken's working on a project for Gary. Okay, cool. Um, Douglas is doing an AMA. Uh, what? In <laughs> YouTube, that means ask me anything, but he's, he's always tw twisting words and phrases around. So he's thinking American Medical Association there. He thinks he's a PC doctor. Ken assembling three machines into one thinks he's a PC surgeon, old age syndrome. Chris, I will be watching, going to lay down. I will not see the chat. I get tired after I eat lunch. The been to the store, got home. Chris, I hope this doesn't in, in, in mean that you're not well, but if so, well, take care of yourself. Now I got to go to the mailbox for a few minutes. Dang, mailman is late today. My mailbox is a mile away. Matthew, hello to everyone. And by the way, hello to everyone that I'm touching your, your chat comments here. Uh, some hellos back and forth between people. Maybe with Doug will make you more blue. Now what's this? Camp, Matthew Camp, hiya Smurf. Maybe Doug will make you more blue. You mean you think I might go click on Matthew here and come over to this three dot menu and click on that and come down and choose add moderator and that would make him blue? Is that what you think I'm gonna do, Blackwatch? And we'll see. Mandarin Man at 70. He's not blue. Heard about this channel in, and chat. This is my first time on. Well, it's not his first time on the show, and some of you know who Meandering Man at 70 is. And Blackwatch is asking Meandering Man at 70, how is Joe Ellen? So Blackwatch made that connection right away. He knew who Meandering Man at 70 is. And Ken Stout also, apparently, it is different. It, it is different for sure, and Doug is great at helping people with computer issues. Today, there's nothing specific. will be interesting. Yeah, I kind of have some thoughts on that about doing live streams without a specific subject. Maybe I'll make some other comments on that later if I remember about it or if you ask me again. Uh, Blackwatch to Ken. He was with Joe Allen for the Chromebook buy, remember? And someone just turned blue. Oh, that's me telling uh, people in chat that somebody turned blue. Who would that be? I uh, can says good morning. I uh, some good morning there. Oh, that's for me. Um, oh, sure. Ken gets a shout out and Ken turns blue. So Ken turns blue to people who don't know. What in the world does that mean? Who who's who is Ken here? You got to be an insider to know that at this point. And, uh, so Ken turns blue and Ken gets a shout out because I said good morning to oh Ken. Put me in orange and said good morning to you. And I responded to that in orange. Blackwatch, I don't think you, did you put me in orange? Nope, 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 you didn't. So, but but he did here. Oh, sure, Ken gets a shout out. Ken turns in blue. Ken turns blue. I'm still left in green room for a week. Blackwatch has, he'll come into my, he'll come into my Zoom session when I'm not there. And I get an email about it later. Oh, you know what? Uh, AVDW check, huh? Our watch goes on the table. 
audio, visual, DVR. DVR has been automatic. I haven't been having to do it for several streams now. Yeah, it says that. Can somebody test that, please? I'm showing 22 convert concurrent viewers and 11 likes. So that means everybody did a half like. That's how we get 11 likes with 22 viewers. Then let's see, I guess I got to go way down to the bottom. So I got that one highlighted so I can get back up to it. I'll go way down here and say, no, Ken, Doug has been muted sever se severally. Ken, no, Ken, Blackwatch is saying, no, no, Ken, Doug has muted severally. <laughs> DVR good from Tony. Anybody else about audio visual? Okay, come back up here. Um, Meandering Man 70 says, last I heard Joe Ellen is doing great. She loves the Chromebook. It's perfect for her needs. Uh, I didn't highlight that, did I? Um, can the Black Watch remind you of Beat? What? Remind you of Beat Gee? Be yeah, whatever. Beetle Geese? Eh, Beetlejuice? Is that how you spell? No, that's with a J, I think. I uh, can Fresno has ca no cat houses to pass the time. It's my bad. I do have a client that has a lot of cats, so I think I can get you an invitation to their black watch. Uh, time bad day to give that up is what? Hellos. Uh, let's see. That, oh, this is me responding to black watch. I gave black watch an emoji. Now I was trying to get him an emoji of shouting. But I didn't find a shout emoji. You know, when you want to do an emoji, you can click on this emoji down here. And then right in here, search emoji. And I was trying shout because, oops, wrong keyboard. Shout. There's no emoji found for shout. What the hey? And then I tried loud. Didn't find that. I get tears for loud. I don't understand how the word loud Get an emoji. Oh, look, there's a bullhorn. I guess I could have done that. I could have done a bullhorn and then the at symbol BL is enough to get Blackwatch's name to pop up and then hit that. So is, can that be called a shout out? Blackwatch, hey, Frank, he has a big apple. Blackwatch, Doug is trying to make up with with makeup with buying me a sarsaparilla no way jose uh no one tell chris it's saturday there's no mail delivery he needs the exercise anyway i get mail delivery on saturdays maybe black watch in canada doesn't doug took his car in for service yesterday replaced the driver's seat with a new beach ball they replaced it with a new driver too uh oh the worst uber ride ever the one i i took the car in actually on Thursday and and uh, left it overnight took it in at the end of the day Thursday got an uber ride home best uber ride ever the Friday morning ride back to pick up the car worst uber ride ever the one on Thursday I, I, I tipped him five dollars the one on on Friday I didn't even reply to the review request boy I told Stan about it I don't know if I'm gonna go on who's Stan <laughs> That's the first time I've mentioned his name, huh? Who's Stan, everybody? Does everybody know? Does anybody know what's going on? No, this this guy doesn't know what he's doing. He seems confused, so I don't know what's going on. Did you get the email last night? I did not get, get off work. That's chit-chat between them. LOL, that can happen. Happy Saturday. Doug, your mic is low. My mic is low. My mic is up there. It's not low. It's high. It's up high, but now, okay, so I'll, I'll do, I'm going to try an adjustment here on my mic. My, oh, you know what? Carrie was talking about changing the, changing the um, in, in, um, gain on the microphone. And I think I changed that because there's a lot of background noise. Now I can change gain on the streamer software and I can change gain on the microphone. So right now on the streamer software, that looks like I'd say it's about 90%. Let's see. Oops, that muted. Uh, if I come over here, I think I see a better adjustment. I do. So that shows 
shows my voice bouncing and says 81%. So here I'm about to change up to 100%. And you tell me how it sounds. I'm going to go up to 100% and I'm going to go back down to 81. So this is 81% and this is 100% using the adjustment in the streaming software. So now I'm going to go back down to 81% and you tell me what you think. After I get your answers to that, then we'll play around with the adjustment that's actually on the microphone. So I'll go ahead and, and go down to the current and say there is what's look. Okay, I don't see anything on that yet. Check your phone. Ken says check your phone. Check audio. Okay, so why did I not hear that? Was that before I took my watch off? I don't think so. Why didn't he? Sh I should have heard Ken send me a text. I'm gonna go check the volume. No, that looks okay. Um, Ken, send me another text just to test that part. And Ken says there was no change from 81 to 100. Oh, that's interesting. All right, we'll try the test with the adjustment on the microphone. All right, so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this microphone down off of its throne <laughs> so I can look at the back and remind myself where that adjustment is. This is going to make some noise. Which one? Of, there's gain. The upper knob is gain. So that's, that's what the microphone looks like. And it's in this foam thing. So... Here I'm going to turn that all the way up in three, two, one, zero. Now that is, wow, that turns a long way. That probably made a big difference. I'm not sure where to turn it back down to now. That was a long way to turn it. So I'm going to try turning it. That was like 270 degrees on the knob. So that's about down back down I see Ida Rivera there uh, let's see ah uh, now we can hear you now I, t I turned it back down but I don't think I turned it back down as far so Ken says turn it back up a little so there's up a little yeah black watch said low again doogie uh, let's oh I lost whatever highlight I had up here so I lost my place. Uh, I, you know what? I think I'll stop reading through all of it except for uh, the people that hit me up in blue. Uh, happy Saturday. There's the mic stuff. Chromebooks will make good doorsteps from Jeff. Uh, just kind of looking, glancing through these now. Not enough coffee. Uh, against medical office, uh, medical advice. So that's the AMA session. Ken's giving us another uh, explanation of the acronym. Okay, I gotta go. I gotta, no, Ken. Okay, I gotta ask. I have tried on different PCs and the volume is really low. I'm 100% on both YouTube and the PC. Can barely hear. Is it just me to Blackwatch saying go easy? So that probably has to do with Ken's uh, broadcast. Ken does live streams. If you click on his, his name, in the chat room, you know what does it does it still take us to its channel? I'm gonna see. I'm not I'm not sure that I th I think they turned that off. It used to be when you clicked on somebody's name in chat, it would take you to their channel. And that doesn't work anymore. Ken, if you want to put your channel address in chat, you're welcome to. I did the same here, barely hear him. Now let me go down to the bottom and see what we're saying. Now, thank you for turning up all the best. From CFWW, I don't recall seeing that name before. Welcome, glad to see you. And I liked it better at high volume. So that doesn't mean higher than now. It was good, low again. So that's 1118 and it's now 1119. So that's not a very recent. Mike needs to be closer to Doug, not just. Yes, Vladimir, I would like to have it closer. The problem is when I have that big mic closer, it gives me problems with makes it really difficult to do anything. But I, I agree with that. Uh, Jeff says it's good now. 
um, f- because when you bring it up closer, you get that podcaster. Now that that interview that Carrie Holzman did with uh, the ASUS, the guy from the ASUS. Uh, I'm not remembering his name right now. It, is, it was the first time that I heard him. He was he was really good. Um, that microphone. I went searching for that, and I found it. And I found two places I could buy it for under a hundred dollars, and I found that you could buy it from what was it, Egghead, or one of the other well-known places for like six hundred dollars. I have some fishing going on here, so I did some checking about that, um, those two websites, and I found that they were scams. That people were reporting their massive scams. People would send them the money and they don't get it. So okay, I got a message. Uh, I saw Ken asking if I received the second message and the phone did not rattle on me. And your audio over the video is super low and that was 1110. So is that still Ken's opinion? I don't know if I've received the second one. No, that was 10 minutes ago. I haven't received. Ken, what I have from you is check audio. Your audio over the video is super low. And those two came in during the same minute. So I don't think I've had a second message from you. Nada. Uh, Wayne says, sound is much better now. Hello, Wayne Pierce. I think I've seen your name before, but not certain. Welcome. Glad to see you. I'm up now. I heard you from Chris. I am okay. Just got tired. Took about a 30 minute nap. All right. Great. Glad you're back with us. It sounds great now. Many thanks. And I saw that. And Tony retracted something. And then Rob D. Doug, do you know if Microsoft will force an update with systems when yes and no, sort of. Let me answer that a little bit more. Let me make sure I've got uh, there was no change from 81, phone message sent, I heard another one beep in, we'll get there very soon now, good now, did you get the second message, no, I'm up, I heard you, uh, you just need a nice boom mic, yeah, I've, I've tried some various booms, and, and actually the thing that I'm most interested in right now is hanging this microphone down from the ceiling, and having it positioned here just above frame, I've also thought about small microphones, but that one, that one that that guy from Asus, it was small enough that it could sit right here in front of me on the table. Now, the problem with having anything that gives a connection to my desk, it gets a hum. There's always been a hum. Uh, boom mic. So that's still an open subject. Uh, now he seems to be lagging. Uh, okay, so how's the... Somebody made a comment, and I've I've been seeing this and struggling with this, where my audio doesn't match my lips. Chris, I had my booster shot. Mother got hers. She's having a reaction. I think might I might be having a light reaction. I'm sorry you ever hear that. I hope you get through that all right. So sorry, had to cut Doug off. He cannot manage the studio today. And hello from Gary. Okay, let's go look at who's in. Uh, Okay, so now I'm going to try Zoom without my headset, earplugs, ear wigs, ear, whatever those things are called, technical terms. What do you know? Video was flaky for a few seconds. Oh, let's see. How is my CPU? Um, look, my, now I've got the go, the Google Earth running live it's not a, it wasn't a video like I've had in the past. I got it running live because I realized I still didn't get the recording redone after adding Jim. So it's running live right now. So before I open up Zoom, I'm going to shut down the Google Earth and watch my CPU and graphics percentages. Let's see if they get better. Wrong mouse. Wrong mouse. Here's... Google Earth, right click and close all windows. That should bump up a little while and then come down to a lower average number. I don't think we were seeing 20s while that was running. And then I'll close SNAZ, which is what does the countdown timer. Close that. 
And then Spotify. Why does Spotify keep coming up? Silly goose. Anything else to shut down? I already closed my OneDrive on this computer. And so let's see, I see 30, 31, 36, 30, 31, and graphics 60 some odd. So now let's see if that goes up when I bring people in. I've had a few doorbells now. I see there's four participants, which means me and three others. I'm going to click Admit All. And then minimize that thing and then bring the zoom on session. Look at that. There's our newbie. Ida Rivera is here. Hello, Ida. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I was delighted to see your email asking for the zoom oh. credentials. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good. You are pixelated. I'm pixelated. Um, I, I took I, I took a shower and I washed my face, <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know. What Strike one up for Doug. He got a joke in everybody. Yeah, <laughs> that's better. That fits. Okay. I don't know if it's your system or my system, but you were every all four of us were actually. No, I'm seeing it too. How are you? Thirty six, thirty three, thirty eight, and <clears throat> GPU sixty one bought and paid for a zoom account for me to use on my channel which is just fantastic i'm still overwhelmed with uh happiness on that and i, <laughs> I just forget to change the name um oh it's been great we were doing the 40 minute thing and we found a little, yeah. little loophole in that but that got kind of old and out of the kindness of his heart he reached out one night a couple nights ago and, and said you know here it is so fantastic again robert thank you so much all right, so here on my on my iMac, oh, yes. here on my iMac, I have streams a warning message. So I'm looking at stream health warning the stream's current bit rate, 836 is lower than the recommended bit rate. We recommend that you use stream bit rate of 4500. So that's sounding like they're saying I'm I, I'm adjusted wrong. Let's see if I can make an adjustment. I'm ultra low. Well, I refreshed. He's good now. Everyone, good. I think everyone's yeah. saying it's back for now. Oh, is it? All yeah, right. I'm looking good at the moment. Oh, here it says open widget. Let me see what that does. Oh, that just goes to this stream health thing. Well, that warning refresh thing going on my, on my YouTube studio, live stream studio. It's not even showing the video. Oh, it just hit me again with that bitrate thing. So are you still Dirty getting... pixelate a little bit again. All right. All right. Let's see. What else? Have I... My my CPU and GPU numbers look okay. We took Stan off. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth. As such, viewers will expire. Okay, I'm going to try something. You know how when we end the stream, we can keep going and chat for a while. I think I can actually end the stream for my streamer and then restart it. I don't know if you'll have to click re refresh or if you'll have to relaunch it. What else? My experience with that has been you'll have to start all over again. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. It may. It, it, it may be. So does that mean you have? Uh, but when you end the stream from your streamer, you can tell your streamer whether to end the. Um, the YouTube stream at, at the same time, or are you just ending the output from your streamer? And that's a, an adjustment. And I don't know what I adjusted this one for. So here we're learning stuff. Now I've got three computers here that are running. So I can close the video, the live studio on my mat. That shouldn't affect you. And I can stop the video play on my other two computers here. Let's try that. Here, here's my brother. Here's my brother Stan. Hi, Stan. <laughs> hey, Stan. Hi. I was I was going to invite him to jump in in the Zoom session, but now nah, now nah, I don't know. So let's what are see. you streaming with? OBS or XSplit? 
X split. X split. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, uh, because it has so many expletives. Ex expletives. <laughs> oh, two in a row does on a roll. Hey, hey, <laughs> you know it. So, well, I'm not going to see stream health there. Can I see stream health over here? I don't know. I've got everything else shut down on this computer except Zoom. How are we looking now? And I can't even see chat. Right now, on my other computer, it's pixelated, but on my main computer, everything's good. Now it's back to good over there. So, and then Chris Garrett just said, wow, it's really pixelated. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. Now we are pixelated again on mine. Yeah. I don't but it's weird. He's pixelated I on my monitoring machine, but over here on the main machine, full yeah. screen, he's fine. Hmm. Hold on a moment. I think I hear Ida saying something yeah what do you have ida yeah it's uh Pixel i think oh no it's pixelated so okay yeah i'm only running at 720p too in youtube on auto All right. so i'm going to do speed test on computer number two Gary's wanting in the Zoom when you get a chance. Oh, thank you. Jim said he's not on the globe. I don't know if he was complaining or happy about that. <laughs> I thought he was. He should have been. I saw him. I confirmed that he was there. There's Gary. Let me scroll back. Maybe I misread what he said. Oh, look at that. Look at that. 0.53 megabytes upload. That will not work. Not, sure. not hardly. Oh, look at that! Look at that! And what? there's Gary with his sound on. Hi, Kenny. Hi, Gary. <laughs> Are you causing us to slow down? I am. I yeah, figured that out last you're, night. Yeah, but Gary, you're causing us. Oh my feedback. God! That sounded like black watch. Oh okay. no! No, Gary's, not me. Oh no! Gary's muted. Gary, you got to stop playing the YouTube through your speakers. It comes through your your microphone. Uh, so test, uh, yeah, 0.53 megabytes upload. That's not going to work. So because I'm so technically educated on this, why is your upload so slow? Because it's broken. Hmm. I'm getting a real slow upload and I have nothing to do with you. Here you go. Look at that. That's better. That's fine. Maybe you're having ISP problems or something. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. Maybe it's all the internet slow. Yeah. YouTube, yeah. I mean. Well, this... I, hey, it's a little better. Oh, that's a lot better. 8.48 is a lot better than what was it, 0.5 or something? Yeah, it was, it was well. below 1. Yeah. No, it, no, no, because the upload... Okay, everybody, check your internet speed. So I'm going to test again. I wonder if I have it, if it's just you know, flaky up and down. We do have a little bit of drizzle of rain here. And that can cause electrical stuff to go wonky. That looks better. Okay, how about, do we have pixelating? Do we have... You're good now. Yeah, you're good now. Yeah, I think it's probably, as, as long as I'm getting a good upload speed, it's going to work all right. So let me go back to... Almost 10. Say again? Could be nice, so. Yeah, 840. All right, I'm going to go... Bring things back up to speed. Ooh, I'm getting good this morning from Cox here in Vegas. That's all right. Nine and a half up, 178 down. Jeff, with that comment, you're going to get a comment from uh, Blackwatch. Yeah, I'm 229 down, 39 <laughs> up, so I'm good. I'm anxious to try out this new provider. I'm getting the free month from they're claiming 700 up and down. We got a flyer today and I'll go get it and read it, but the, they're getting the fiber optics going and they're offering it for one year at $70 a month. I may look into that. I don't know. Yeah. What speed? One gig. No, I think it was. Let me go check. Sure, right back. Jeff, is that fiber optic for you? No, it, they're calling it wireless fiber optic. Which is an oxymoron, of wow. course. 
Yeah. What it is, they have fiber optic to several broadcast locations in the valley here in Las Vegas. Yeah. They have uh, broadcast signals on several Walmarts, Home Depots, places like that. And so I'm going to have a receiver on the roof that's going to get that. And so I get a month's free trial. If I don't like it, they remove it. It doesn't cost me anything. All right. So let it's, me catch It's an outfit called Wheeling, W-E-L-I-N-K. Now, interesting. Uh, catching up here on, on chat, uh, Gary coming in, better, uh, Selden Bells from Carrie's 3, 3D Cube. Yeah, I know that. Did, is Selden here? Oh, yeah, he is. Hi, Selden. Good to see you. Yeah, I know Selden's the one that does the three, that did the 3D Cube for Carrie. Um, one, uh, and there was something else he was involved in, I think. Um. He's the gift master. Say again? He's the gift master. Gift master. Selden yeah. is? Yeah, yeah, Robert's got 920 up and 931, or 931 up and 920 down, and he's complaining it's slow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we're going to... We should all be so too. lucky. Right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Vladimir asked if I'm on 4G. No, I'm on uh, Comcast. And there's a hello back from Selden. Okay. Now, how does this... Okay, this says excellent connection now. So, the YouTube studio is happy with me now. Uh, stream is healthy. At 11.37, stream is healthy. At 11.36 was another warning not as bad as previously so maybe something happened and is gone could something could these two devices have been slowing you down my cell um, phone and my ipad because i just now turned them off theoretically they could have if particularly if they have some kind of problem with them where they're putting out garbage through the through the internet connection um it's it, under normal usage. No, they'd have to be putting out a lot of garbage over the internet. Okay, then. But I kind of doubt that. I just turned them off, and now it seems to be doing better. And I don't know if yeah. that had an effect. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm kind of interested in you bringing your computer back up and those devices and see if we're still okay. All right. I bet uh, it was a Comcast problem. Yeah, I'm th I'm thinking it was, and I'm I'm thinking it was probably just transitory. Wow, where did I come up with that word? <laughs> you went to school for that one. <laughs> <laughs> transitory. Transitory. When I, was, when I was coming up to that word, I knew oh boy, there's multiple symbol syllables here. And you know everybody's looking it up right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it means. <laughs> yeah, Ken's got his hood head down. He's looking. He's looking up. What is that? Oh, here he is. What? What's he doing? He's showing us what he's looking at. Let me. Let me bring you. I don't. I gotta see this bigger. Uh, uh -huh. This is really big. Oh, your prices for your fiber internet. All right. Fiber internet, seventy dollars a month, sixty dollars a month, thirty-five a month. One gig. Does that one gig say up and down? Well, it does, but then when you read the, the fine print in here, it said speeds are not guaranteed, so. Oh. Gonna have well, to that's like this one here. They say 700, well, up to 700 up and down. Yeah. But yeah, I, okay, uh, so up to that. That's so like, I didn't hear your big word. What was it? So I can go Google it. Transitory. Okay, thank you. I wasn't sure I was going to remember what it was. Um, yeah, in regards to up to, you saw that, that, um, that uh, test that Carrie was running was it yesterday? And it sh you had the different CPU cores, and one of them was running at the higher number that he was expecting to be the top end, but the others weren't. So yeah, you can go up to meaning you'll never see more than that is all they're telling you. What number you're going to see below that? They're not obligated to. Well, I will tell you, when I run speed test here, I always get a little more than I'm guaranteed. 
from a little cops, more than you're guaranteed. Well, that that can happen because they're now not. That is, yeah. I, I'm only guaranteed one fifty. Now I'll generally get one sixty or so. Yeah, but when they say what you're guaranteed, we expect that to be a low lower number than well, what I, you're actually. Well, I seeing. shouldn't say guaranteed. They're saying up to one fifty, and yeah, I generally not, get a little more. Yeah, yeah. up. So to I'm going to run. Number. I'm going to run my technical problem past Doug and see what he thinks. When I was paying for a hundred, I was consistently one thirty to one forty. I just upped it to three hundred, and I'm sitting in a two forty to two sixty range now. My ISP says because I have a. 3.0 Doxus modem, and I need to go to 3.1. Oh, yeah. Your thoughts? Oh, absolutely. If your ISP is telling you you need a better quality modem, I've seen that over and over and over. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Is your modem provided by the ISP, or have you, do you no, it's you mine. Got your own? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That happens, and that's why I don't. I'm not really interested in buying a modem. Buying a, a router could be okay. But uh, the devices that we get from the ISP is typically a modem and router combined in one box. Yes. And they don't have the the router portion of it is 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 not the highest feature um, capabilities of routers that you can buy on your own. But I'm okay with it. I don't I don't feel that I need to have the better ones. Um, but and so when my ISP has upgraded their systems, next time I happen to call them, they typically check to see what equipment I have and they say, oh, hey, you need a new, you need a new router. New, then they'll use the term yeah. new gateway, new router, new modem, whatever, to get a better speed. I've been through that a few times. So now let's hear Chris hit me up in orange. Your internet was having a adult word. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, actually, I should say your internet was having a digital adult word. Um, <laughs> that's not bad. You can say that. I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not dissing anyone for putting. So I have a way. technical question for you too that was sent in to me. You okay. know me; I am so technical. Go ahead. Let me find it. Give me one second here. Let's see yeah. if I can. How do you spell computer? PC. <laughs> oh, that was quick. <laughs> okay. How can I modify slash replace the contents of my recovery partition? Modify now, you know me, replace. I'm so technical, I'm going to know that right off the was top of my head. Is that the I thing that we talked about the other night when I was asking somebody about how to get rid of that recovery partition? Perhaps. If I go in here into disk My management. Uh, you remember Alex said, somebody said to use AOMI. Or yes, Alex AOMI, I believe it was. Well, here's Damn, the, I wish I would have remembered. I could have answered and now I wouldn't have to copy. Them. Never mind. Here's the recovery partition. Uh, 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 Doug? Yeah. To interrupt you for a second. Jeff, it was Jeff's question, I think. And he's got a uh, HP recovery partition that's like 10 gig. Yeah. Well, besides, well, I mean, I had, okay. besides the GPT from Windows 10. Yeah, this right. is... I, I have a one terabyte solid state drive, which I cloned from the original hard drive when it got old. And it still has a Windows 7 recovery partition on it at the, the end of the drive. And I was asking how to... I know how to remove it, but I didn't know how to merge that space with my C drive. And Gary, I think maybe, and Alex both recommended this AOMI partition manager. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I don't think yeah, that was means. actually sent to me and it wasn't from Jeff. It can be oh, done okay. in, in Windows. You don't need another right. software to do that. I I does right. You don't need a you don't need a third party. Well, software. but I've got one of those hidden partitions right after my C drive, and I don't know how to move it. Well, okay, yeah, you're not going to be able to if it's not contiguous, you're not going to be able to move it. Now, I'm not going to actually I'm not going to actually uh, delete this rec this Windows 10 recovery partition because we we want to keep that. Windows can't repair itself without right. that. But if you have an HP recovery partition. Right, that's what it was. It was an HP Windows yeah. 7 Pro partition. <laughs> yeah. The H-Ringer. 
So you you can you can um, I know how to get rid of it. You can but get I just rid of the partition space. Well, then what you need to do is extend the other volume. See this extend right here. Let me see if I'm looking. I'm not seeing what you're doing. You're, you're on still the zoom showing screen. the zoom. Oh, yeah. Push the right button, Doug. Ah, uh, you're such a Doug. Um, I'm gonna move that. Yeah, Chris, I'm gonna do that. So then here's Let here's the extend volume. Right now it's grayed out right now because there is no place for me to extend this partition to. There's no space available. But if I had unallocated space adjacent right, right. I understand. to this I, drive. If it was all uh, contiguous, I know how to do that. Yeah. It's just I've got this, I don't know, 900 meg hidden partition in there. I mean, right. it's a Windows 10 thing. If it's not contiguous, then you would have to use a third party manager. And I think they can do that. But that piece, I'm not sure of. Okay. Um, okay, so let's get out of here and go see what else is happening. Um, da -da -da -da, looking for orange. Um, Chris, I knew that work at three years old. What? I knew that work at three years old. I knew Word. Word? Word. Word. Oh, okay. Um... <clears throat> Internet flatulence, another adult topic. No, it's not. 20 minutes behind in DVR mode. Once I catch up, I'll pop into Zoom. Okay, so catch up. So Jim, I'm sure, knows to hold down the shift key and press the period key to play it faster. And you can catch up in DVR mode to the real time. I do that a lot. Um, so, Doug, what do you recommend for a partition manager software? I, I, I don't, I'm not really a good person to recommend that because I don't do that enough to have a preference yeah. one over another. I have, I have two different commercial products. One of them is called Paragon Hard Disk Manager, and it's really old, but it did clone my drive successfully. And then I have a, a Cronus 2021. Yeah. But I haven't used the Kronos much. I mean, I know how to do the backup, but that's about it. Yeah, I would never have occasion to want to move partitions like that around for a client. And I, the rare instance that I've come across that, I just go grab one and just do well, it. Well, this isn't a life or death thing. I'm not yeah. out of space on the drive or anything. I just hate to see wasted space there. And I'm never going to yeah. use Windows 7 again. So, so Gary, Wasn't that a Freddy Fender bit, wasted space or something like that? <laughs> Don't know. Uh, Jeff, take a look out of my name under chat. Yeah. yeah. Gary's got a link in there for the AI. Right, 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 right. I saved that. Oh, you got it okay. on the spell. Yeah, yeah. I saved it from uh, okay, that's the other the night when we talked about this. Yeah. But thank you. Uh, to Gary, did you get my email? Not yet. I haven't looked at it. Okay. It's close. I, I'll, look, I'll look in two minutes. Uh, Doug, I yes. actually got another question for you. Okay. I, I at night, about once every couple of days, do my own backup in case, you know. Yeah. I, I've, I've been known to, you know, format, and I'm kidding, but something at the wrong time. I use a Cronus. It seems like they've changed it again, and I'm not liking the way it's working. It used to format a uh, flash drive, and you just stick it in, boot to it, and there you go. Now they make it a religious experience to get to the flash drive. A, a, a what? <laughs> religious? religious experience. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I was trying for a joke. You have to pray that it will work? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All well, right. anyway, you're using uh, Re Reflect? Yeah, Macrium Reflect. Now, how does that kind of two-sentence work? Yeah. Um, well, you have to install the software on at least one computer in order to create a bootable USB device. And then that will boot a computer straight into Macrium Reflect utilizing the Windows PE environment. Good so far. How, how long do you, when do you have to renew it? Yeah, uh, never. I, I have uh -huh. obsolete versions running on computers. It keeps, I, I turn off the, check for updates 
because if it's working for a particular computer and that hardware, I don't care about the updates. I don't need whatever extra obscure feature they've added. I don't need it to support another piece of hardware on a particular computer that I'm already using it. If I have it on my USB memory stick and I'm having trouble with it working on a particular computer, I might go grab an update, an updated version of it. And you could, and that's all true with the free version and the paid version. The main reason why I will pay for it is if I'm installing it on a client's computer for it to do routine backups, you know, a business environment, mm -hmm. I feel sure. they ought to be paying for that. It doesn't have any extra feature capabilities for them in that environment. Although they have predefined backup uh, styles, meaning a full backup and then incremental or differential. And one of those methods, I think it's incremental, is available with the free version. The alternative, in my example, is differential. You have to pay before you can get that one. I don't know if I said those correct or I typically do a full backup when I have scheduled backups and typically I'll have them have a split the hard drive, the storage media into two partitions and the second partition will store their backups. So it's very quick because it's on their internal drive. The other reason why I pay for it is because paying for it, it will send me emails letting me know if the backup was successful or failed. And I typically configure it to only send me an email if it failed. Because if I have it send an email for successful, I wind up getting immune to paying attention to them. I just click them. Plus, if you need help from the company. Yeah, I never, you know. do, yeah, I never do that. If I yeah. need if I need help, I go search for the I go Google for the answer, and I've I've never needed to. Okay, what's the name of the company? Macrium, Macrium dot com, M A C R I U M. Okay, dot com. Yeah, how do you spell com? <laughs> okay, got it. Thank you very, very much. Well, since we had that topic, I'm going to uh, bring it up to get it recorded into this uh, video, Macrium software. And then, oh, now here's a key thing, though. If you want to do the free version, a little trick that you have to know. Here's Home Solutions. And then here's Single License and 4-Pack. And it's not very obvious how to get the free version. Home Edition, Macrium and Flex, still not seeing free version in here um, and then if you go to products and come down to reflect home under this personal section and click on that I'm, I'm, I am stumbling a little bit to see does this guy know what he's doing he seems confused Where oh there's you? reflect free under the home yeah do you, you see it uh, left right it was right under reflect home in that last tab up you had up Home, uh, reflect home edition and go back up to where you were, Doug. To reflect home where I was, I was lots of different. Oh, here it is, reflect free. Okay, thank you. So click on products, then reflect, reflect free. Now it's actually a one version obsolete. Now there's the and they have a free commercial, they actually say you can use this for commercial purposes free. Uh, basic backup and cloning capability. So I do have a paid version for myself for my main computer. Oh, I got to turn off the waiting room. Sorry if there's anyone else waiting here. I'm going to turn off the waiting room. So if anyone else comes in, you'll just automatically be in. Brace yourselves. Here he comes. <laughs> Hi, Black Watch. Hey. <laughs> Hey, Black Mash. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Oh, now look at this. Maybe they've changed. Here's Reflect 8 free. It used to be you had to do Macrium Reflect 7 to get a uh, permanent free version. But this looks like they're including that, including version 8 now. So what do they say? Removable media, image and clothing, create images of running Windows 8 OS. Restore non-booting images, 
Uh, scalable, navigatable, log view, boot, backups, and Hyper-V, direct disk cloning, uh, WinPE11, rescue media. Oh, WinPE11. They're using Windows 11. Hmm, companies don't use that, I've been told. <laughs> Say again? I've been told companies don't use that. Companies don't use what? Windows 11. Well, yeah, but but you you can use the Windows 11 P you know, Windows PE version 11 to do a restore of Windows 10. I understand. Okay. I was being facetious. You were being facetious. Mm -hmm. That's another big word. Um, creating now I, this bothers me. Restore non-booting systems. That's implying that you can't restore a, a bootable image with the free Reflect 8. So if that, I don't read it that way, you don't, I don't either. I just say, I would say that you can also restore a non booting system. Why is that significant to put a bullet point on that? Good point. Why do see if they put that in a bullet point? That makes me think above well, the that, line above it, Doug, say, says create images of running OS. Yeah, that's creating. That's not restoring. You can create images no. of a bootable running OS, but if you yeah. want to restore that, it looks to me like maybe you have to pay. Which kind of makes well, sense. Well, if it's running, why would you want makes to restore sense. it? Well, right. You don't need to restore it until you have trouble. When you have trouble, right. hey, pay for it. They're rescuing. Right. It's rescuing you. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, right on. they say you can restore non-booting systems with the free version. Yes. Uh -huh. And what if your system doesn't boot? Read, oh, now, okay, so here's the alternative way to read that based upon what, what um, Jeff just said, I think. Restore not, if your computer's not booting, you can restore it to a bootable state because you can restore non-booting computers. Restore yeah. the bootable image. That could be what that means. Yeah, your system on boot. It will right now, you've got it. to have the flash drive. And yeah, you have. Yeah, obviously. you have to. You can make the bootable flash drive from another right, right. computer. So I was looking down here to see if they have old versions available, and I'm not seeing that. Uh, but now, so I'm looking here to see if there's old versions. Technicians, tech, technicians license is really expensive. How much is the regular license? Oh, uh, reflect the uh, buy now. Right here, buy now. Let's see, that's under business standalone buy now. Personal. Oh, I think that's four or five hundred dollars, isn't it? Yeah. So here's single license is seventy dollars. Four pack is 140, and then that um, technician's license. But I'll make a liar out of myself. Okay, here's buy now. They has to. They don't display the amount at this point. I'm gonna make you guys smaller. Buy now and eight hundred dollars. <coughs> technician license. <coughs> Thirty-two hundred fifty for a deployment kit. Ay caramba. That's expensive. Yep, yep, it is. It is. So, and that's that's per technician. So you got a, a, a IT department, and you want to equip each of your technicians with a technician's license. Well, if you got a bunch of them, maybe that's why they offered the deployment kit. It, yeah, yeah. So this has got to be in a large environment. I I could never justify technician's license for my own. So I think I think when I'm using the free version for a client's computer, I feel that I am uh, in this commercial free because I'm using it for business purposes. And, and they actually said that somewhere. I keep having trouble finding, getting back no, to No, but if you bought one, a copy for that client. Well, of course. And, and, but it also can be, I, I can be saying, okay, it's being used as a, and the, 
I'm operating the software on behalf of my client and they have a free personal um, version. version. Does? Yeah. Why would they need a four computer license? Why would somebody need a four computer license? Okay, I can, I can answer that. I can answer, oh, the four pack here. Buy four yes. pack license. If you want to do the scheduled backups with email notifications from each of those computers, you're going to put it on on four separate computers for doing re re recurring backups. And you want the backup schedule that requires a paid version and or you want email confirmations sent. Um, I, I, I think in a lot of environments, they probably would select not to do that, but I, I'd say that would be a reason why somebody would want to do that. And because they're in a position where it's not a strain on the company finances and, and they're doing the good citizen thing. And if the, if Macrium gets enough money, the, uh, off of people who are willing to pay for it. Uh, they survive as a company and they provide the free version to people who aren't in a position or aren't willing to pay for it at this point in time. And some of them do occasionally pay for it, like I do. Sometimes I buy it on behalf of my clients and that's largely because I'm so familiar with it and comfortable and with it. That I know as a company, we have to basically we have to lay out our receipts or accountants, you know, when we're audited. Yeah, well, some of my clients have instructed me, do not use free software for us. We want to be paying, and they are they are concerned of an audit type situation. They don't want to be caught in that environment. So sometimes that is a company policy. Uh, nor, so, nor open source right now, because that's obviously bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's you also got to be concerned about supply chain infections of some sort that exactly. could, more likely can come with open source. Let me go catch up with chat. Uh, looking for Orange. Uh, Chris, don't feel bad. I struggle sometimes. That maybe is in reference to one of my comments. I don't know. I knew um, that works. So that's that catches me up for the Orange things. As a reminder. <laughs> I am. I might skip. I'm probably going to skip over you if you don't put me in orange. Blackwatch. Doug's favorite subject: Mac, 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 maximum reflux software. <laughs> All right. Uh, da Vinci answer out of that was chit chat between us. All right. So that that kind of gives a little exposure to Macrium Reflect, and I. I favor that largely just because I'm so familiar with it, been using it for a while. I don't object to somebody using another product, but the one that um, we were just talking about, what's the other one that they're, they don't do free anymore? Acronis. Um, Acronis. Acronis. Acronis, yeah. Acronis used to do free. Now, if you buy a dry uh, a storage medium that c comes with a copy of Acronis, for the purpose of doing a clone, but it's not a full operating version, as I understand. Plus, they put a limit on the time. A limit on the time that you can use it. Yeah, because they're providing it mm. with the storage that you buy so that you can clone from your old drive. Well, Seagate used to provide a working version of Acronis. They didn't call it that, but it was made by Acronis. Right. It was called Ghost. And it had no limitations except that you had to have a Seagate drive in your system for it to work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Gary, did and you say it was called Ghost? I don't remember. I had a friend that used it. And yeah, I Norton, Norton made a part. Uh, ghost. Nord made Ghost. I, I had Ghost when it was three and a half inch discats. Yes. Anybody remember? I did too. Passed back. Say again. Uh, does I anybody did. remember the fast back software from DOS days? Yeah. I ran it yes. on five and a quarter inch floppies. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and that it, was in the days of when I had a 
30 megabyte hard drive, though. Yeah, there was he was only... rich. He was rich with that. <laughs> Mine was 20 megabytes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> There was backed also, it up to five and a quarter inch floppy disks. There was also right. carbon. And you had to initialize the drive. I remember that. Yeah. Put into the BIOS. Mm -hmm. There was also carbon copy. Was yeah. Another one back then, and there was uh, there was another one I was trying to think of. That I think I encountered. Oh, I know. Um, lap link. With the cable. Uh, with the uh, cable. Yeah. Through, yes. Through parallel ports. The cables. Yeah, they, you yeah. could use serial. To transfer data. Right. You could use serial ports or parallel cables. And that was mainly for transferring data. And that was for USB cables. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, very cool. This will seem strange. My daily backup routine is a batch files. I have used XCopy. Oh, right. yeah. No, okay. I, 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 and it's I, only for data. I have image backups with the software, but I don't make an image backup every day. So I have some batch files I wrote that use Xcopy and one for my email, one for the data files and so forth, just stuff that I don't want to lose. And if something happens and my laptop crashed a while back, and so I just go to the image backup, install any software that I had added since the image, and then restore the data from the Xcopy stuff. And it works fine. Yeah, I've done, I put batch files on clients' computers and they train them to put in a USB memory stick. It's typically when it's, you know, not a huge amount of data. And they train to double click that and that creates their backup. From Los Angeles called Kind K. That's gotta be a spam. Do we want to hear a spam call? Hello? Hello, open enrollment is here. Press 1 to speak to one of our agents. <laughs> Medicare! <laughs> yeah, open uh -oh. enrollment. God, I hate that. Doug, you're getting old. Yeah, well, that's just uh, everyone. That's for everyone's insurance. I, I can't I can't change my health insurance unless I'm in the open enrollment period. That's one. Weird thing. So somebody came in. Who just came in? Jim. Oh, Jim. Hi, Jim. So, Ken, what's up with the glasses? Practices for my next poker game. Practices? Oh, poker <laughs> face. All right. All right. Uh, Last one I played in, I had second place all wrapped up, and then I made a very stupid, costly mistake. I'm sorry. Say that again. What? Last poker game I was in, I had second place literally all but wrapped up and then oh. I made a stupid costly mistake. Oh, and did you not have sunglasses? No, on? I finished fourth. <laughs> mm. All right, over here, let's see. Zavi Menard put in a link for Western Digital uh, downloads. Uh, take a quick look to see what's there. Okay, so download. Oh, a Cronus True in image for Western Digital. So if you have Western Digital drives, apparently that doesn't work on other drives. Is it blocked for them maybe? It'll work on the other drives, but only if you have at least one Western Digital drive oh, in your system. That makes sense. Chris says, I had ghosts on floppy and I still have an image of that ghost floppy burned to CD. I have it somewhere <laughs> off on uh, Norton Ghost. Uh, and, and Ghost was a standalone product before Norton bought it, I think. Ghost was excellent, easy to use. Yeah, and they got bought out and failed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Norton has a history of buying up stuff and screwing it up, in my opinion. Yeah, well, some of the big companies, that's that's their mission is to uh, buy They just bought the Vast. Ditch them. They uh, bought Norton the bought the Vast? Yeah, I just saw that yesterday or the day before. Well, you know, they were also owned by Avast. Who's the other A one? Avast and... Oh, yeah. Uh, it sounds like Avast is also was, uh, was freeware. Well, Avast had a free and a paid antivirus products. Wasn't Avast, what was it? I feel... Mm. Talking oh. about AVG, maybe? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. They were owned together. I mean, they bought each other, whoever. Well, the Vast bought C Cleaner a while back. 
a year or two ago. Yeah. Then they came out with the browser. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, was, I haven't tried it. I know what you're talking about. I don't know why they needed another browser, but I guess. Okay, Stan, I just sent you by email a link for this Zoom session. Let's see what happens if you try to do Zoom. I'm, I'm still, it, people in the chat room, the audio is still good, even though I'm not wearing my, my headset, right? Give yep. me a confirmation. Yes. That, well, you guys are hearing that, so you no. know that. Although you guys aren't listening through YouTube anymore, you're listening through Zoom. Right. So right. if this problem were happening, you wouldn't be hearing it on Zoom. It would only be coming out over YouTube messed up. Uh, it does seem like you're having a lot lag, though, Doug. I'm having what? A lag. A lag. L -A -G. Meaning there's a delay with the YouTube video compared to Zoom? Your lips are... I'm not being playing. Your lips are moving, but you're not talking. Oh, okay. So now, but when you're looking at my lips on YouTube, that's not going to coordinate with the voice you're hearing over Zoom. If you're seeing my Zoom. image to Zoom, you're hearing me through Zoom, and my voice is not matching. When I look at the screen here, my my voice doesn't match my lips. I'm okay. seeing that effect on my computer. So uh, let's see. Yeah, I can't actually turn off the broadcast. So that's probably because the broadcast is taking priority. All right, so Greg in chat says audio visual good in Maryland. And I'm talking loud enough to reach Maryland then, that's good. <laughs> Zvi says video and audio 100%. AV is great, Gremlin's gone. How is the audio visual synchronization? There's Stan, hi Stan. Um, so now Stan's microphone is muted right now, you can see that, and he looks like he just locked up. He looked, when he was holding yeah, his fine. thumb up, he was frozen. Yeah, his hand is waving. And it's yeah, locking. Yeah, locked up in there. Hey, oh, hi guys. He's on an hi old computer. My mic is off. He's on an old computer. And Where is it? I'm looking at the same lock ups on this end. Okay. Yeah. I hear your voice through the house, but that's not through the speaker. So I hear your voice through the house, and then it comes over. Uh, Zoom. So is, are the people watching on YouTube and listening on YouTube, are they hearing an echo when Stan speaks? Go, Stan. Speak. <laughs> hey, Doug, CFWW wants to post the link. Say what in chat? Yeah, yeah. CFWW oh, asked if he can link? post a link. Yeah. So to do that, CFW, I'm going to make you a moderator. I just ask you, don't hide people or block them for their comments unless they're absolutely vulgar or absolutely spamming. And then please let me know about it. If you're just wanting uh, moderator status so you can post links, then that's fine. You don't have to worry about anything. So you should believe blue now, CFW, and be able to post a link. Actually, I don't know who CFW is. I, I, I think we first. I think I first noticed him today. So yeah, we may want. To, Doug, you might want to be ready to. Yeah, ready, ready, ready to. Ready to. I think it'd be good. So and and, and I so chat um, CFW. Go ahead and post the link that you want, <laughs> and uh, just out of. I think your Zoom is good for audio and your lips moving, but I think on the YouTube, I think it's due to the lag of the normal YouTube lag. All right. Oh yeah, you. Yeah, I, I should be having somewhere from five to ten seconds lag on YouTube when you're looking at YouTube compared to what you see on Zoom. Uh, audio, video, and sync. Audio and sync. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Jim. Windows 11 works my old computer. Bill says, "Thank you, Jim. Windows 11 works my old computer." With a question mark. No, I think his question mark was he just he fat fingered the keyboard. Um, um, he was time. he was here last week, um, and we I discussed the modifying USB thumb drive thing. Oh yes, I remember that. I remember that. So he did he used that method apparently, and it worked. Cool. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah, I went back and looked at that again because I haven't uh, tried that. I don't know if I will try it. I don't have any strong reason to want to install Windows 11 on a computer that's not qualified. However, so here's a story. Well, no, I guess you already know that. If you saw the video I did last of purchasing a laptop for my oldest brother, Tom, who's in Minnesota, he's he's the one that has Joellen as a sister-in-law. Um, so we bought a computer for him. I ordered it for him. He has it. It came on time. And it's Windows 11. So these that's a Windows a, a computer that came manufactured and pre-installed with Windows 11. And I and I we could have done Windows 10, but I discussed that with him and said, "Look, you're going to have to upgrade to Windows 11. Why not just do it now?" And and he liked that. And if it works, well, you know, leave it there. Say again. I said, if it works, great. And if it doesn't, yeah, you can always bring it back down. That's right. That's right. We we can return it. Well, let's see. That was from Dell, but still, there's a return policy. So then. Stan is here. He's a meandering man. He's, he lives in a, in, a, in a van and travels the country and has been around to see all of our uh, family uh, during the last year or so. And, um, he's got a YouTube channel also, Meandering Man at 70. And he's, his current computer is actually a computer that was, was my dad's, our, our dad's. And... Um, <laughs> And it's it's really slow. So he uh, saw the deal for Tom's computer, and we just ordered one for him. So it we also did the it it was supposed to arrive the very next day, and it was also free. the The seven day shipping was free. The six day shipping was going to cost thirty some odd dollars, and the next day shipping was free from <laughs> direct from <laughs> that's Dell. crazy. Yeah, as wild. Um, now in maneuvering through Dell's website to get to that, I specifically clicked on a, a, a rectangle they had for computers ready to ship. So if I went to that same computer using one of their other navigation methods, I'm wondering, is it possible that next day would not be free because that rectangle that was saying computers ready to ship free next day it actually said something like that free next day so clicking on that thumbnail big thumbnail but thumbnail did that get me into a path where it was going to be free next day and if i chose that same computer through some other path would it possibly not be free for next day delivery or two day delivery i don't know but anyway, so Stan's also getting Windows 11. And we saw him freezing when he's in Zoom right now. And that, we think, is because that computer is just old and slow. Stan, Stan wave your hand back and forth. Let's see if you're not freezing. No, he's definitely stuttering. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, no, he's, it's freezing. Yeah, he's stuttering. Every once in a while, you got to shut down. So can you see me now? Well, we can see you, but your hand is not moving smoothly. Is that because you have a health condition I don't know about? <laughs> 29, I think it is. 29 current viewers, 17 likes. Thank you. I think you, I'm going to shut down and bring it back up. Is that okay? Sure. And also, Stan, do you still hear me? Yes. Um, in the bottom right corner, in all those little icons, I think you have a OneDrive. After you restart the computer, right-click on OneDrive and choose Close. That means you're not going to get uh, synchronization with OneDrive okay. as long as it's closed. But that lightens the load on your computer. Hey, Doug. Yeah. Don't even interrupt, but CFW uh, posted. I've actually read the article, decent article, good post. Yeah, it does look interesting. Oh, okay. CFW's article from ZDNet. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, In other words, it wasn't, a, you know. Yeah, it was, he wasn't, he wasn't going to do something Bad. So the Speedy C. Hello, Doug, and everyone in chat. Hello, Speedy C. Uh, hey, Doug, can I get up to Zoom? Uh, yeah. Um, if you don't have the credentials, send me an email to uh, Doug Betts at LiveWindowsTraining.com. The address is on your screen right now. Send me an email and ask for the credentials. I'm not publishing them anymore because of crashers. 
Uh, then, so CFW, I'm window 10 from Bill. Okay, so then ZDNet, let's go see what he's telling us here. Microsoft now is one of the world's fastest, whoops, advertisement, go away. Microsoft now is one of the world's fastest supercomputers, and no, it doesn't run on Windows. This seems... runs on doors. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. Comedian, we're doing comedy today. He said anything. I believe this thing said anything goes. Yeah. Maybe you uh, can go. <laughs> 30 petaflops. I, I actually have some software called Doors. Okay. What does it do? It uh, models the transport of radiation to different media. It's an old stuff I used at work years and years ago. All right. Sounds very radioactive. <laughs> no, but it can model whether you're radioactive or not. Well, you knew it was coming, didn't you? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so what is this computer running? Is this Sierra? Or did I skip through too much text? This fastest computer not running Windows. What is it running? Oh, it's running Azure. Yeah. As an it's operating system? It's a cloud system? computer. Yeah, it's super it's cloud. Cloud. Power Voyager. Well, Microsoft Azure is a cloud service, but I wasn't aware that it's an operating system. Let's see. You can you can you can start up a, any operating system on a virtual machine in Azure. <laughs> oh, uh, it says it's running Ubuntu. Oh, Ubuntu <laughs> does it? <laughs> Damn it, it's down in the article a ways. Yeah, down and here. Why why am I not surprised? Yeah. Right there? Yeah, here it is. Voyager is running Ubuntu. Yeah, that makes sense. So if, you, if you want to pass through here, you better learn Linux. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Well, now, now th that's the supercomputer is running Ubuntu. Does that mean it can't run Windows or they just chose to put Ubuntu? Probably they wanted a light, a light operating system to be a little more sweary. Yeah, lightweight without all the extra junk that's in Windows, that, that totally makes sense. Yeah, we had too much crap in Windows, let's put something else on it. <laughs> so let's see, Stan has restarted there, and I just he just froze there. He's kind of froze there when he moves a little bit. So Stan, try your, yeah, there you froze again for a moment. What yeah, kind of computer does he have? What, still what speed? Yes. All right, so Stan, you want to, let's see, how... You're gonna. All you can do is hold the computer up. It's an HP uh, laptop, and I'm looking on my computer number two to see if I can. Um, I'm gonna get a few words, and then you guys cut out, and then I get a few more words, and you cut out. I don't see anything locking up or or waiting, but I don't get all the words that you guys are saying. All right. Yeah, it was funny there through that, what you just said, I could hear you all the way, your whole, everything you said, I could hear through the house, but I didn't hear all of it through Zoom. Yeah, he's broken up. Yeah, yeah. So you got a marginal Wi-Fi signal where he's at? I mean, he's in the same house, I realized, but could that, could there be a signal yes. problem there? Yes, that, there could be a Wi-Fi issue with that, or, or the way that computer's going through Wi-Fi. Um, but he also, he participates in our Brothers and Beer Zoom session on Friday evenings using that computer. And in the same location? Well, no, out in his, in his van as he's traveling the world. Oh. oh, and he's also got his cell phone and his iPad um, connected through the Wi-Fi. I'm going to turn these off on the Wi-Fi. All right. Yeah, because that'll reduce the load on that Wi-Fi. It's not one of Asus's Wi-Fi routers. <laughs> but, Some of those are pretty slick with the W6, W6E. Was that the model of one of those he was showing? Speed, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay these are both off now. Oh, boy, I know how I could stress your computer more is for me to connect remotely to your computer, Stan. <laughs> you don't want him to post anything, do you? Well, I could, I could show you, I could, I could show you the stats on it, what it is. Okay, I mean, okay, like. So uh, if you want to learn computers, I've got a technical question for somebody. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. 
I have an old Dell Inspiron 15 Series 3000 laptop. Came with Windows 10 Pro, bought it in 2016. The reason I had stopped using it is because both the wired and wireless functions on it have gotten very flaky. Now, the, the, hard, the wired thing is in the motherboard, so I can't do much about that, but the wireless portion is on something that fits in one of these little PCIe slots, and that it's about would be one inch. replaceable. The it's question about one inch is, by one inch. Do, hmm? One inch by one inch about? Yeah. And the question okay. is, is it worth replacing that? Because this is an old computer. It's got an AMD A8 something quad core APU in it. And I'm not sure if it's worth messing with or not. That part's up to Doug, but I will tell you for like $16, you can get a 6E uh, chip from Amazon. And that'll be like I said, $16, $18. And that'll be as fast as anybody's Wi-Fi. Now, now okay, what are you talking about exactly? You lost me there a second. Okay, it, you, you have a Wi-Fi chip, which I will guarantee you is slow. Right. For between sixteen and eighteen dollars, you can get a Wi-Fi chip off of Amazon. Right. It'll be as fast as any that they have out there. Okay. Matter of fact, I bought one to put on one of my computers, and I'm quite happy with it. So to make this useful again, I would need to replace that chip and probably also put in a solid state drive. Uh, that's up to you on drive. Right, right. But for the 16 bucks, you just speed up the Wi-Fi. Okay. I don't know if the computer is worth updating. Uh, Doug would probably know more about that than I do. Well, it's, yeah. it's relatively slow and I do have a newer HP laptop, which is fine except for the hard drive which i'm going to replace with a solid state drive so okay so my re my response to that uh, jeff is it depends upon whether that computer serves a purpose that is worthwhile if it's if if well i replaced it with the hp laptop so yeah. it would be kind of superfluous the one thing i could do with it i have a nine-year-old grandson who could use it yeah so, yeah. So, so if it worked, I could let him have it. If it worked, all I'm going to be spending is the cost of the Wi-Fi thing and maybe a solid state drive. And I have one of those lying around. I could uh, swap it out for. Yeah, I, I, th I think that that absolutely could be worth doing because it gets okay. a, an inexpensive computer into his hands. Um, now, and Windows 10 isn't the, the rest of the feature updates that we're going to be getting and the security updates. I don't think they're going to be bloating Windows 10 as much as it, as it's happened in the past. Right. This one is probably two years back on feature updates. I mean, I know it's way back, but I know how to update it to, to the latest one just off a of flash drive. Yeah. So. And then if it's not performing well enough because it's it, you you're shifting it to a different person, you could do a fresh install. Right, of sure. 10. Yeah. Um, All right, well, okay, so, thanks for the advice. Yeah, so let me go show um, uh, Stan's computer. Now, Now, Chris asked if he's wireless or hardwired, and that remind me that we can actually have him plug in an Ethernet cable, because there's an Ethernet cable plugged into a computer, another computer at the table where he's at in my kitchen. So we can, we can also test that. But let me go ahead and show you what it is. So coming over here to log me in, I'm connected to him already. And then we'll go to the desktop. And then, so this, this one has been uh, re, um, a fresh install of Windows sometime uh, back. He doesn't have a whole lot of stuff on it. We'll do... Um, Windows key R and MS info 32, enter. So Windows 10 home and Hewlett Packard, uh, HP G7 notebook, uh, X64, i3, 2.4 gigahertz. Um, so at least it's in the 
it's an I. <laughs> it's not a, a Pentium or a, or a uh, Celeron. Celeron and all those kind of things. It is an i3, 2.4. So, oh, G7 notebook. That's um, wow. That's got to be eight or nine years old. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So then, let's see. Nothing else in here really of interest. There's eight gigabytes of RAM. And then let's go look at components and then storage and then disks. And you can see my, the delay as I'm going through that fixed hard disk, one terabyte. Um, it says it's a solid state disk, SP, SPCC solid state disk. Yes, that's right. It is It is a solid state disk. And I remember that now. Um, SPC, what's SP stands for what now? And um, Silicone power maybe? Yeah, there you go. That's it. Silicone power. So it is a, a, a solid state drive. And Which is the only reason that machine is tolerable. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but actually this, these stats don't really explain to me it's uh, the glitchiness that we've seen. Oh, find the network. Yeah, so we're going to try the, the Ethernet next. Um, I, well, my, if, if, I, if I were to take a guess, it's probably the Wi-Fi card in that thing is so old, it's, it just can't keep up. Well, now here's, an, here's, another, here's another problem. Look at the lower left, lower right part of the screen. What problem do you see there? I'm going to move the... Yeah, I was just going to say, you need to move that because I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this should be oh, alarming good to Lord. everybody. You need to put more stuff down there. Yeah, there's not enough stuff there. Put more. That's not yeah. my point. <laughs> That's not my point. Let me see if somebody, well, I got a chat, another chat screen over here. See if somebody notices it. Oh, the yeah, icon red. thing. You got a red going? Yeah, you got that red dot. That red dot means that this computer needs to be restarted to install updates. And anytime there's updates, whether it's a red dot or yellow dot, I've seen all kinds of crazy, weird symptoms. And, and actually, this computer is behind the updates anyway, it say, looked like. Say that again? The computer was, it looked like 17, so oh. 20 something. What, the, you mean the Windows version? Yeah. Windows version? Really? Oh, well, then that probably means that this computer has been failing to install updates. There's a shocker. So here, <laughs> now it's, it's only got a yellow here, and it says update and restart. Now, he just restarted it. Um, so let's go look it's at... Off. It's off now. I think. Well, I would right-click on the start button and pull up system, which I think you still can do, and just to see what version it is. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. But notice that the airplane indicator... Yeah. But notice that the airplane. Uh, okay, somebody's got your. Turn your YouTube audio off, whoever just came in. Who do we have? Bill Lipkiss. Hello, Bill. You do this. Yeah, yeah. you got to you gotta stop your YouTube volume from coming over your speakers. You got to stop your YouTube volume from coming over your speakers. You Gary. Did that do it? I, okay, I'll take a look. A, Gary. Yeah. Yeah, competition. Yeah. No, it's Bill. Cool. Okay. Yeah, Bill Lipkiss. Why do you say that? Is that better? I think so. Yeah, I'm not hearing that again. Oh, I took ring. off the I took off the browser. Took off the browser. Does that mean you're not seeing the video anymore? No, I'm not. I, I didn't know how to do it. I just shut off the whole browser. Oh. Well, okay, so let me come over here and show how to do that. Oh, let's see, I'm, I'm, I'm not showing the right thing here. All right, so Stan's computer, let's see if he still has the YouTube. I thought it was off. Shit. Uh, if you have your browser on and go down to the lower left, well. Yeah, I'm gonna show At it. least in Firefox, that's where it is. There's yeah, a it symbol. Is. It is. I think I don't understand you saying, we lowered my volume on my system. And, or on the YouTube channel. YouTube, the YouTube channel. channel. Yeah, you can okay, get it on YouTube. Well, let's see. I guess I can't actually show this to him since he's not watching the video now. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do it now. I'll do it now. Okay, yeah. You just move your mouse to the lower left of the YouTube video, and there's a speaker. You click on the speaker, it'll mute it. Uh -huh. Or you could turn the volume slider down. Okay, so getting back to Stan's computer. I'm going to use uh, Windows key R Winver. 
And it, I'm waiting for it to appear. The characters are even slow typing. Uh, 20 H2. Interesting. That's all right. You saw 17 somewhere? Somebody said they saw 17? I thought it was a 70. What was it, 19? Well, this is Windows version 20 H2, but that's build 19042. Is that? Okay, I, I missed it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So let's let's go look at update history. So uh, let's see, I'm going to Windows key, update settings, and waiting for the characters to appear in the search window. That's all. <laughs> uh, Windows update settings. Your device is missing important security quality fixes. 2021-11, it's waiting to install. Come down here to view update history. And uh, September 2021 was a successful installation. I'm not seeing any recent fails here. So that's okay. It's, it's getting updates. It's just needing an update now. Uh, needing this update installed, but it's surprising to me. Oh, he has uh, his film, his video editing software open. So that was taking uh, oh, some minute. resources. So, oh yeah, that's a that's probably a resource pig. Yeah, so let's go look at Task Manager to see how much resources that is taking up. So we don't really get to see anything in Task Manager at this point. We got to go to more details. Once you go into more details, then next time you open Task Manager, it should open to this screen. So they're showing um, 15, 18, 17%, 51% memory. Um, so that's not a lot of, uh, that's not overwhelmed, but it's, it's high enough that once he joins Zoom, that's going to go higher. So let's go ahead and join him to Zoom. Now, this is still while we haven't restarted it yet. I uh, clicked on the start button, waiting, and go to Zoom, launch Zoom, and see what happens to those numbers. 60%, 52. And, and it's showing airplane mode, where it's actually connected to Wi-Fi right now. Airplane mode means Wi-Fi is turned off. So this computer is claiming it's in airplane mode. That's simply not true. It, it is connected to Wi-Fi right now. Uh, let's see, join a meeting. Okay. Well, let's see, here we got, uh, he's connected to a Wi-Fi in my house called SJVP, it's the 2.4 band. Um, it's sh it, showing I, full strength. I thought I was a dud. Okay, the other Wi-Fi here is called BETS, and then, Join a meeting. I uh, choose the right one. It's this one. And then remember my name, sure, and join. And then the code. I got to go look up the code because I don't remember it. Jeff? Yeah. I got one posted. It's nineteen dollars. Sue me. <laughs> I'm. I followed your link. I'm not seeing it yet. I'm scrolling through. It's about the fifth or sixth one down. Mini Wi-Fi adapter, USB. No, nope, two, three more. Two more. Uh, I'm seeing a bunch of laptops in here amongst the stuff. Oh, Wi-Fi 6, laptop upgrade card, dual band, 1969. Yep, that'll work. All right. And got Bluetooth 5, too. Okay. Oh, BH Ringer saw that Windows security. Needs Thank you. Attention. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that, they're all the same, to be honest with you. And it's, it's Amazon. Done work, send it back. All right. But I'll say that it'll work, not, not a doubt. All right, I've got a bunch of other stuff I need to order from Amazon, so I'm save the link. I'm going to add that to my list of stuff to buy. Yeah, I what Appreciate I would do, what I would do is go into it and then save the link. 
There's a length of 375 characters. I couldn't send it to you. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I saved the individual one. There you go. You're, yeah. you're good. Yeah. All right. So here I'm joining Stan with audio. And he's not actually at the computer right now. So this is, yeah, there, there he is. No, no, you're fine here. We're just looking. So then here we can see his numbers up here, 40% CPU, 55 memory. So those, those don't really look bad enough to be sh causing the stutter. I'm bringing a European. Say again? No, no, sorry. I was mumbling something that I was typing. Oh. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and restart his computer, and we'll see if it performs better. And if it doesn't, then we'll connect the Ethernet and see if it does. It does? Yes. Better? Just a quickie, you know that computer we looked at with Microsoft? It was running AMD chips. Oh. <laughs> AMD chips and Linux, how do you like that? They're, they're trying to get... Um, trying okay. to piss people oh, off. Oh, <laughs> that editing software is still open, so I'm oh, going to... No, I got it. I'm going to can, uh, cancel the restart and then uh, shut down the editing that he was working on. Oh, it shut down. It shut. Apparently, the restart command started. So how does he like Wondershare Filmora? I like it pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, uh, a little, a little, sometimes a little cumbersome, but I'm brand new at it. I think I got it about three weeks ago. Oh, excuse me, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, Bill. Yes. yes. Bill, you have a header on top of your frame. It says Bill's Tech for Our Seniors. Yeah, I do that I do that once a week. Oh yeah? Well what what is it? What do you actually do? I do like like teach them computer basic one oh one. All right, cool. Yeah. Where at? Or... It's online. It's it's out through California. How oh, many people okay. do you get? I did get one client uh, every week, the same one. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Start with one. That sounds familiar. <laughs> good, good. Well, good on you. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Why? Wait a minute. Oh, there he is. He's in a different. <laughs> moves to a different frame when I change that. All right. So here's Stan's computer, ready for me to launch Remote Control Session again. We might see messages about installing updates. here on the picture in picture and oh okay so then it, that didn't that didn't go through the connection that means it oh it's showing 17 minutes and there it just switched down to six seconds and that's climbing up again so now I'm waiting to see the launch remote control session come up so it wasn't actually restarted yet when I clicked on that and that that's a thing that happens when I'm restarting a computer is I'll see the launch remote control session button thinking that it's ready for me, but it's actually not yet. What are you guys trying to do? Well, we're trying to see why his computer is stuttering so much. Uh, Stan standing behind me right now. He um, has been working from this other computer in my kitchen. And when he's participating in the Zoom session with us, he was uh, jittery and freezing up. A lot. Well, that computer right now is connected via Wi-Fi, and it was indicating that it needed to be restarted to install updates. So we're first restarting it to install the updates. Here's 40% complete, and see if that improves the performance. I'm guessing that it probably isn't going to be enough because the Wi-Fi routers that I have out there aren't real great. So next, we'll connect him to an Ethernet cable and see if that fixes his Zoom performance. I have a delay for some reason. I don't know. It's weird. Well, on YouTube, you're going to have a 5 to 10 second delay. Um, I have the ultra low latency because when live streaming on YouTube, there's always a delay of some extent. And I have it set on the shortest possible delay. Now, if you're seeing a delay over Zoom, you might be seeing where my voice doesn't quite match my lips. Uh, Not the, the when I see you in Zoom, you're right. But when it's in when it's in the thing, I even see myself in a delay, and yeah. I see everyone. Should be. 
Should be a five to 10, 10 second delay. And that's expected. No, it's all right. I'm not worried about it. I'm just watching. All right. Well, thanks for coming into the Zoom session for all of you. Um, it's a whole lot more interesting to have people <laughs> talking than just me. I still do the just me videos, but. I usually don't do Zoom too much. I really don't know how to use it, but I learned. All right. Good. So I I'm noticed one thing I had with my computer was kind of weird. When when I was getting there, the voice was on and everything was on going crazy. It said it had low resources. It was weird. Weird. All right. Yeah, that can that can be a thing. All right. So here we're back at the desktop. Uh, then oh now somebody mentioned the exclamation mark on Windows Security. So I'll go ahead and deal with that. It's still starting up though. Let's give it a little bit more. Oh, you also have, you have iCloud and you have OneDrive. So those are also always looking for activity um, for something to do. So shutting those down when your computer is uh, straining to keep up with the demands is a helpful thing. They did shut down OneDrive last time, but... Yeah, but not iCloud. Much. Correct. Yeah, so here we'll go in and deal with the Windows security. That shouldn't be causing any sluggishness or performance problem. This is app and browser con control. The setting to block potentially unwanted apps is turned off. Your device may be vulnerable. I kind I, I, I often... Question, could it be any malware on the computer? Pardon me? Malware, like malware. Like I know they say it, you, mail can make things freeze if you have too, too many malware on your computer. Yeah, well, we don't want to have any malware. Now, are you saying anti-malware software? Like, like, it, like the, a virus, let's say if you have a virus, it's going to make the computer slower and it gives you a freeze. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah, but that's not the only thing that can cause freezing, and I don't think that's what we have going here. It has been years since I've found and remediated a true virus infection. Back with Windows 7, geez, that was one or twice a month. Um, anyway, on this app browser control, I typically, I, I like to turn that on because I think it does block things that becomes known to the browsers as being vulnerable, but that might only be working in Edge. I haven't investigated deeper, but that's one that I do like to turn on. Um, and whether it, it, does it cause any performance issues? Again, I haven't investigated that either. Now let's go look at another thing. I'm gonna right click on the, um, the network icon and the notification area it currently looks like an airplane indicating that it thinks it's in airplane mode where all the radios are turned off, including Wi-Fi, but that's not the case. It's set for a uh, public network, um, which is okay. That means we wouldn't be able to connect to each other's computers here uh, through the network. If I want to change that, no, oh, well, that's happening on the Wi-Fi. We previously had said work network for him, but he's switched back and forth to different Wi-Fi. So we're going to go ahead and change that to private. I don't know that that'll make a performance difference, but really what I was heading for here is I want to go to um, change adapter options. I think that's the one that, yeah, gets me into here. Really what I'm after here is be able to right click on this Wi-Fi and choose status because from here I can get an indication of the speed. It's running at 72 megabits per second. Da 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 da. That's a problem. That's slow for for a Wi-Fi connection. That's not his internet speed. That's his connection through the Wi-Fi device on this computer. And that is that's a built-in Wi-Fi on that computer, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be causing definite sluggishness. Uh, then I'm sure that means we're going to still see sluggishness on Zoom. We'll launch that. And then while we have Zoom open, we'll have him plug in the Ethernet cable, and we should be able to see a immediate improvement. Famous last words. Okay, Bill, did you bring it up for everybody? Could be why I'm so frustrated with it. 
Did you bring enough sandwiches for everybody? No, I took out water. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, I'm sorry, I was gone for a little bit. What did we I'm miss? What did we find? Oh, he, he got water. I was harassing Bill. He's a good guy. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking about Doug. You found something? Well, oh. yeah, yeah. You, you, the, I, I'll be kind of re-summarizing this in a moment, so just hang on a moment. So we're joining with audio. And so, Stan, can you go back to the computer and let's see if you're um, still sluggish. So I'm going to bring up, right now you're seeing the Zoom session on Stan's computer. I'm going to switch, push my button to bring the Zoom session back up on the YouTube live stream. So he's moving around there and it's a little bit, it's a slow frame rate, but he really hasn't gotten jittery yet, as bad as um, he was. I moved it over here so you can see me instead of having such bright background. All right, all right, good. And how about just bring your lid down? A yeah, there you go, proper headroom, max headroom. Um, and yeah, I, I, he, he seems a lot better just for yeah. rebooting the computer and getting the updates installed. That's all? That's all. I think all. so too. Yeah, yeah. It seems I to think be better. Be felt. Yeah, definitely looks better. And we haven't shut down OneDrive or no. iCloud. So Probably. let me go do that. I'm going to switch to your computer stand. You're not going to, uh, I'm going to click on it. So okay. I'm going to minimize your uh, Zoom window stand just because it's so confusing. So it what happens does? here, he sees one person at a time. Go ahead, Gary. Does he have all the updates for his computer? Uh, good question. I think so because it looked like he was keeping up. Okay. Um, so, but but it, it's a good enough question to go look at the current state. Update settings. And then last checked, 835 of year up to date. So I'm not going to click check for updates again because we'd have to wait for that. We know that it successfully installed this update today. So that update was a cumulative update. It was waiting to be installed and that causes all kinds of different sy symptoms I've seen. So here on his OneDrive, I'll right click on it. Now on my streaming computer, I had been explaining in prior videos that I was pausing the syncing, but now I'm actually closing OneDrive. So that doesn't break the connection. Next time you open OneDrive, it'll catch up on synchronization. So then we'll uh, right click on iCloud and iCloud's different. It doesn't have a, here's iCloud settings, but it doesn't give it to me there in a menu. Uh, waiting for that to open. On Stan's computer, you see Bill Lipkus. I think that's just because um, he was the last person. Well, his frame is highlighted right now. Why isn't my frame highlighted? That's curious. I don't know. Um, so here's iCloud Drive, I've got an account details, sign out. So if we sign out, that doesn't break the connection. That just means he has to re-sign in next time. I don't want to remove the check mark because I don't want to stop that configuration. I just want to sign out for the time being. And now, if you turn off iCloud, all documents stored in iCloud will be deleted from this PC. I don't want that. It will still be available in the can. I just want it to stop synchronizing. I don't, I don't like that method of doing it. Count go to, maybe go to, your, is it a set, go to your settings before you do that. No, I go to don't settings. Like that. Yeah, hang on. You mean uh, computer settings? You're not. You don't mean iCloud settings. iCloud settings. I think you have oh, to go into. iCloud settings. Uh, is it available on this screen? I don't see it. No, it's. A, I I see it. I see the settings. <clears throat> right there. You just passed it. I guess you don't see what I see. Well, there's a delay when you're ta You're talking to me from about something you're seeing on a video that's delayed. So oh, okay. if you can describe right or left, up or down, um, or a button. It's down, it's down on the bottom. It's bottom, maybe right. I see an apply button and a close button. 
I don't see a settings button. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Sorry. All right. Um, now, I did a click on his photos checkbox that actually changed the status of that. He does do photos, but he doesn't do albums, I don't think. Is that right, Stan? No, correct. No albums, no. All right. So I think, yeah, that gets it back to this hyphen in there. So then can I close without applying settings? You are tempted. You want, yeah, I want to close that without apply, applying settings. That didn't close iCloud. iCloud is still running. Yeah, see, I don't see a way to pause it that I'm comfortable with. I have to go, guys. See you later. All right. See you, Bill. Thanks for dropping in. So we look on status after his restart. He's still 72 megabits per second. Uh, then, and, and we've seen that his, he's not stuttering anymore. I'm going to bring the Zoom session back up. Stan, can you do the hand back and forth? Waving back don't and forth? I don't see me yet, so let me try. Yeah, you don't see you. Just keep waving. I'll, <laughs> I'll do your, I'll bring your up. <laughs> there see, we there's go. no stuttering. He's good. There's no stuttering. It's good. Even with that yeah. 72 megabits. Now, let's let's do the next thing for Stan is before we even do the Ethernet, I'm going to come down here to the airplane and switch him to the other Wi-Fi, which is going to temporarily drop my remote connection to his computer and connect. This Wi-Fi router is the Comcast router that's here in my office. That SJVP that he was connected to is a Wi-Fi router connected upstairs, almost directly above him. Yeah, uh, you're breaking up now. Oh, really? All right, your internet connection is your unstable. Internet connection that's showing is up unstable. That's showing up on Stan's computer. So he's, and he's still connected on the SJVP. So now we're going to switch them over. So I, I, I haven't seen anything else happen. I think right now I'm no longer connected to his computer, even though we still see it. That's just residual. There, it blurped on me. I think that's a technical term. Did you hear that sound, blurp? And then here it comes back to launch remote control session. And while that's reconnecting, I'll pop back here to chat. The last thing I'm hit in orange is I've already read. Uh, oh, right click on icon by weather. See if there's a settings. Yeah, I think we did that. But if weather's still there, we certainly want to turn that off too. Uh, okay, here's back to the computer. And so now it's on the other Wi-Fi. Um, let's see, who's saying next to the weather? Yeah, that icon there, that, that's how I originally got into that screen. There's no... Oh, here's open iCloud settings. But that's what I was at. That's the screen we were on. We were on the iCloud settings screen. That's this screen. We were already there. And there's no way to pause synchronization or just close that applet. So then OneDrive is open again. Let's close that. And then this weather thing here, is it set to open up if I float over it? Because that uh, causes sluggishness. I'm not going to float over it because I know it'll just take too long to recover from it. So I'm going to go up here to news and interest. Yes, the check mark for open on hover is there. Take that off. But that applet right there, since it's weather, it's constantly checking or it's checking periodically anyway. So let's just turn that off. It didn't go away. Oh, I keep forgetting. This is so weird. You can turn off hover by just clicking on the check mark. You can't turn off show icon and text by clicking on the check mark. You have to click on the alternative choice of turn off. That has tricked me many times. So then right click on the airplane, the network icon really, 
open network and internet settings and see if we got a better speed. Now this took us back to public because it's a different network. So I'll click on properties, change it to private. Click the back button in the upper left. And then scroll down to change adapter options, which is just a weird click to get to status. All I won't really want is status. Maybe there's a more direct way, I don't know. 72 megabytes per second, still slow. Now that could be the Wi-Fi device in, in that computer that's got it that slow. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, you're talking about an eight-year-old Wi-Fi right. device. Right, absolutely. But he's got, he's got decent performance on Zoom now. Now next, we want the Ethernet. So, uh, Stan, go ahead and connect the Ethernet cable. Just unplug it from my laptop that's on that table and plug it into yours. <clears throat> and when he does that, we'll see... Well, actually, I'll lose connection again. So it's, it's going to disconnect my remote connection again. See, I can still move this window, meaning we're still connected. There it says identifying and then identifying, but the Wi-Fi is still connected. So I'm actually not going to lose it until we shut off the Wi-Fi. So now let's see what happens. I've got the mouse stand and then status for the Ethernet, 100 megabits per second. So that's not going to have a gigabit Ethernet adapter in it. That computer's too old for that. And showing this one, whoops, that's not the one I wanted. I want to do right click on Wi Fi and status. And so here we have these two statuses next to each other. So he's connected Ethernet and Wi Fi at the same time. Which one is being used right now? Should be the Ethernet. Watch the statistics. Sent and received, they're incrementing on both sides. Hey. It's using both of them. I have tried this before and I've seen occasion where it'll only use one or the other and a little bit awkward to, de to predict which one and I'm wondering if it's going to settle down to only using one of them after a little while. So we see the Wi-Fi is still incrementing. Ethernet doesn't seem to be incrementing as much. All right, so I'll come over to his network icon, single left click. That brings up the Wi-Fi choices. And then I'll choose disconnect. Oh, wow, look at this. <laughs> oh, I got to move the picture and picture out of the way. You got to see this. I see it. Let's wait and see who notices it. What's mm -hmm. weird about that Wi Fi choices screen? Is anybody in chat noticing what it is? Can't find it. <laughs> I just moved the picture and picture out of the way. It's connected to two. Boom, Ida. It's connected to two Wi-Fi routers at the same time. You have two? I have the SJVP and How I have the BET. How is that possible? <laughs> right. How is that possibly showing connected to two of them usually, at the same time? I usually, when I use the Wi-Fi on my desktop computer, I have to uh, disable the... Uh, the internet well, and vice versa to, in, in order to it to work well. Yeah, but there's another piece here that you haven't said yet, Ida. That I well, the first, the first thing I noticed is that the one that's at the top where it says connected, that's not a Wi-Fi connection. Right. It's Ethernet. It has an SSID for our Wi-Fi, but this symbol right here, it's indicating, and I've seen this happen with Windows 10, where Windows 10 will get stuck on showing an SSID as the name of a wired network. <laughs> and that's just not right. 
<laughs> he should not be able to do that. Look over here. Here's Ethernet. It shows the SSID name and a 2.4 gigahertz for an Ethernet connection. Is anybody's head hurting right, hurting right now? <laughs> that should not. It also hurt. says that it was not secure. One one of them says secure, and the other don't. Correct. The the um, the one that said secure is the one that was actually a wife. Fi. For the Ethernet, it doesn't say uh, secured because there is no password to connect to the Ethernet. I think that's what the word secured here is, meaning this SSID, this wireless, does require a password, a passcode, whatever you want to call it. I think that's why it says secured. So I don't think an Ethernet is ever going to show the word secured because you don't join an Ethernet network by typing in a password. Okay, so um, I do see a, uh, some things in red in in chat. Um, okay, Savi, yeah, you got a good thing there. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. Let's go ahead and disconnect from that Wi-Fi. Um, now this might lose my connection because I think my remote connection was going through the Wi-Fi. I think it actually <coughs> picks a, yeah, because I can't click on anything. So I lost it, even though he was, his computer was still talking through Ethernet, my connection wasn't going through Ethernet. Uh, so now, launch remote control again, and this will be connecting through Ethernet. Notice the notification icons. They're not all present yet, are they? How is it repopulating his notification icons even though he hasn't restarted his computer? That's weird. I wouldn't expect that. And why isn't Zoom still running? Didn't, did we have, maybe I didn't have Zoom running. Uh, here's private network, go down to change adapter options. And then status here, we're expecting to see the 100 megabits because that's what that ethernet adapter is. It has numbers incrementing there. Do the remote connection and then launch Zoom. Now he did get a network stability message on his screen. Doug's meeting, join, go look at the code and I gotta switch over, to, I gotta bring up chat window. I'm delinquent. 2038, go now, join meeting, join with video, somebody else coming in, join with audio. I hear you get out. Okay, Stan, so I'm going to punch the zoom button on my, on the video. I think you, his movement looks smoother. It doesn't look as... Well. If he wasn't freezing up, but uh, it, it was a little jittery before. He looks smoother to me. And you're not breaking up either. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I have to tell a joke before I can break up. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. Whoa, oh, Doug. are you counting? Got the tally sheet going. Stan, well, no, I got, I, before I tell that story, I got to go back. I got to go over to... Um, Chat. We'll be here until Thursday. Try the veal. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go back to chat and catch up with oranges. Uh, do I still have a highlight? No, I don't. Uh, there's the security needs attention. I know Zvi has a comment in here, but he just joined us, didn't he? Did he? No, who was that that just came in? Ada, Ida. Me? Oh, yeah, that was you that just ringed in. 
and I clicked on it. Right click on weather, see if settings. Chris says okay. Uh, search task manager to stop iCloud. That's that sounds like a good thing for stopping iCloud. And Vladimir asks, is a power plan set to high performance? Uh, good, good, good question. I routinely set power plans to high performance and I did the setup on that computer. So I suspect that that is the case. So then let's go back to Stan's computer and, and we'll minimize the zoom on his computer just so it's not going over double on, uh, in the video. That's confusing. Uh, so let's start with Zvi said to search for iCloud and let's close that notification on the right side that says I'm connected, that little narrow one there. Close that because that doesn't have to stay visible. So then click on the Windows and iCloud is what Zvi was saying, was it? Was there more to that? Uh, I'm looking at chat on my other screen. Search tasks, stop iCloud. He said search, stop iCloud. I don't want to remove the connection. I just want to stop it. Disable on iOS, how to turn off iOS on iOS, Mac, and Windows. So... Search task manager to stop I oh no he said search task manager not not Windows search so right click on the taskbar move that pesky picture and picture out of the way I didn't mean to call you guys pesky and then task manager search task manager to stop iCloud uh, I'm kind of liking this idea because that shouldn't change the configuration. So go down here to iCloud Drive, iCloud Tray icon, but it's iCloud Photos. See how much CPU iCloud Photos is taking right now. That's a lot. Why is it taking so much? He hasn't done any recent photos. Is it because I messed no. with the settings? Downloading one item. Up the iCloud Drive updated. Whoops, picture in picture. Move it out of the way. That's my producer yelling in my ear. Whoops, I'm moving the whole thing. Try. Oh, I gotta move. Do that on Stan's computer. Move that. His minimized zoom out of the way. Downloading one item. That's been stuck on downloading one item for a while. And this iCloud Photos is showing a lot. Um, how do I know what it's, what is it downloading right now? Do one I, item. Yeah, one item. That's. I haven't um, done any photos for the couple months or for a month. Yeah, well, I'm wondering if when I had the iCloud settings open and I, and I unclicked iCloud Photos, and then I went back in and turned it back on. But it's not downloading a bunch of them, and I didn't save that change. So that doesn't make sense. So from what Zvi's saying, I think I can end task right here to just stop what you're doing. That doesn't change any configuration. Mm -hmm. That kind of makes sense to me. Does anybody argue against that? Before I, a couple weeks ago, I clicked too soon on something and wiped out a external hard drive. Don't want to do that again. Be a little more careful when I'm making a major change. Why does a printer have to do maintenance? Is that a joke? Is that that sounds like an opening for a joke? Uh, power plant. We still got to get to that. Mm. Why does a printer? Oh, well, uh, um, inkjet print. Well, if it's a serious question, inkjet printers do have maintenance. And I think even laser jet, you, know, you, you, can, you can put a sheet of cleaning paper through them to clean the, um, the pathways and to um, squirt ink through the jets for an ink jet if you haven't been using it regular. All right, so then I'll go ahead and right click and end task here.
So we got all those on zeros now. And here's log me and rescue is 3.8%. Here's the iCloud tray icon is taking some, took a little bit. So we can end task on that also. So that icon should go away. There it goes, gone. And then iCloud drive is still taking up memory. So iCloud drive would be for his iCloud documents. That should be the same thing. We should be able to end task on that. The worst thing possible is if we've broken somehow the iCloud functionality on his computer after, but I think after restarting it, they'll just all come back. And then here's OneDrive, right click and close OneDrive, close OneDrive. So now I think we've done as much as I can think of offhand to improve his Zoom performance, but notice the network status icon down here still shows an airplane, indicating airplane mode, uh, wireless turned off, and look at that SJVP internet access, it's claiming to still be active. Yeah, it re but, but no, it says connected, but it's ethernet. That's the, the name of the ethernet network. So if you float over here, right there, that totally looks like Wi-Fi connection. Down in the bottom right corner, SJVP 2.4 gigahertz internet access. But that's Ethernet. All right, so here I'm going to open up uh, Stan's Zoom window and punch my Zoom button for the video. Stan, do your, uh, your, your one-trick pony again. Yeah, the hand going back and forth. Oh, that's even more complicated. <laughs> Two different directions at the same time. Kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya. Now, now can you pat your hand with your third hand no. at the same time? Is Stan a pilot? Stan's not a pilot, but he has oh. flown with me and with my old brother Tom as a passenger. Our youngest brother, Bob, has also flown with both Tom and myself. And Stan, you made a comment no, Bob recently made comment about why he decided not to pursue a pilot's license. Was that you, Stan, or was that Bob? No, that was Bob, but I have the same reason. Yeah. It's complicated. There's a lot to do. You've got to check off a bunch of boxes before you even you start the engine. Yeah. What I, where should it happen? You can only go down so far. <laughs> And flying never killed anybody. It's the sudden stop at the end. Exactly. <laughs> and with our Young Eagles program, we never left a kid up in the air. So we have nope. perfect record of that. Um, so so yeah. far, you guys are not breaking up. It's good. Yeah. And I have found that with my laptop in the kitchen, that's I have an Ethernet cable out in the kitchen I have this Ethernet cable it runs through the house to get out to that table now there is an <laughs> Ethernet wall jack in the kitchen all of a sudden he loses everything <laughs> oh just because I moved the cable yeah um, there's an Ethernet wall jack in the kitchen kind of right behind Stan's back next to the coffee machine and yeah, for some his, reason I never his... sorry what? His laptop's probably only 10 100. Well, his laptop. Mine's faster. Right. Um, All right, Jim. But I could have. Your camera's out of focus, Doug. Yeah, no, no. It's like Blair. Yeah, I got to stop video and restart video to fix that on my Zoom window. Now it's clear. You're good. Uh. But anyway, I had uh, a Wi-Fi <clears throat> router connected to that wall jack. And somehow after that, I, I laid out that Ethernet cable. I've just been using that since then. But I could probably, if I, if I connect my laptop straight to that wall jack, it, run, it, walk, it goes right across the walkway. That I, I think I'm, I'm likely to trip over it. So anyway, that's a detail you didn't care about hearing. So, next subject. We did all the stuff that we were proposing to do with Stan, right? Yep. So, how's it working? 
I, I think it's doing quite well. I don't hear any breakups from your conversations and uh, I don't see anything with the video that's causing any trouble. Well, your sounds quite mm -hmm. well too, quite good. BA Trainer just posted a speaker in the chat and I think it's a link for you. Okay, now I do want to follow up one other thing for Stan is he's been having trouble with that computer during our Zoom sessions while he's out in his van traveling. Well, he was using Wi-Fi. Yeah, you going through his um, what did you call your hotspot? It's a jetpack. It's a jet, jet pack. It's a Verizon jetpack. Verizon jetpack. So he was connected Wi-Fi there. So we already know the Wi-Fi in that computer is deficient. Well, he's got a new computer coming in. It's going to make a better Wi-Fi connection to his jetpack. Did you order a new jetpack as well, or some new? No, device? I was going to, but I decided against it. Okay, we're going to well, see how this works first. Yeah, try that out first, I think. And maybe while you're out on the road, you could join us on a... I usually do these live sessions on Saturdays. It's been working out lately. I sure can. So that'd be, that'd be fun to have you live from the road. Yep. Our reporter live from the road. <laughs> let's go. Let's get over here to the uh, chat room because somebody said there's something here. Did I highlight? What's a uh, power plan? We haven't, ringer. we haven't looked at the power plan yet on um, Stan's computer, so we ought to do that. But mm -hmm. I think it's okay. There's mm -hmm. Chris about mm -hmm. printer. Mm -hmm. Chris, a sarcastic mm -hmm. joke when I want to print. I want it now, not next year. I got you. <sighs> Uh, HP office jet, and then is that Carrie's kitchen? <laughs> and it was modeled after Carrie's kitchen. No, I'm kidding. That's not even. Mh. <laughs> Bh Ringer, C comment question from the Bronx Nine at twelve fifty two. Okay, I'll do that. From Bh Ringer, twelve fifty two. Scrolling up to twelve fifty two. I love it when you give a timestamp. The Bronx. My CPU AMD. A8-6600 Motherboard ASUS F2A85-V Pro. Four sticks of 8 gigabytes installed only detecting 6. Why, please? All right. Yeah, a few ideas on that. Now, four sticks of 8 gigabyte. Okay, should be detecting 32. And this motherboard. So does anybody want to speculate before we go look up the motherboard? <laughs> no, but it's going to be the memory that's the problem. See, I'm, I'm game. All right, you what, what do you? You're, you said no. I'm not going to speculate, but then you went ahead and speculated. <laughs> what do you think, Jim? I don't know yet. I'm 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 actually just going to go right to the manual for the for the motherboard and take a look. Here we go. I mean, it's it's possible he could have bad memory slots, but I find that highly unlikely. I just think he has one bad chip. Or the memory is um, is mismatched to an extent where it, basically the mother, motherboard goes, what the hell are you doing here? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but if he has four slots and he's got all four slots filled, how could it be mismatched? One because because if he has a kit of 16 that he bought previously right. and put in another 16 kit, they okay. can be mismatched. Okay. Or if he doesn't have Especially if he did it, he, if he did like several years apart. Okay. So, Even if it was the same brand and all? They, yes. Okay. The well, it's, it's entirely possible. Now, here's another thing is if they're matched pairs, are they in the right slots for matching the pairs? That's also okay, a possibility. We're getting technical now. Oh, boy. And no, no he's, he's absolutely right. That's a definite possibility. No, it yeah, depends on how he's got them arranged. Like if he bought the first kit and he's got it in slots one and two, which... I'm going to make okay. a guess is probably single channel mode, and then he puts the other ones in. I mean, I, I it's it's hard to tell. So, not okay. again, not to sound like I don't know what I'm talking about because I don't. But if he puts it in one and two, and then he puts the next one in three and four, would that not balance it all out? No, not, not no, necessarily. not necessarily not because necessarily. The, the way that most of the time the way the dual channel works, it's slot one and three, right? Two and four. Okay. So you want the same chips in one and three and three and two. Correct. One yes. and three and two and the four. The same set. You want the same set in one and three and two and four. Yes. Okay. Usually same chips, but at least same timings. See, I pay right. attention to some things. I do too, and that's the problem. Boy, they're giving up. 
They've got a lot of stuff in here about specific memory. Yeah, I'm sure they do. And and these columns over here, it looks like certain kinds of memories aren't going to work. And that's a, see, that's also a possibility. Yeah. Who said that again? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go see what it uh, tells a little bit more now. Okay. So, yeah. See, I'm looking at I'm looking at the manual right now too. Yeah, unbuffered non-ECCD. DDR33, so they all have to be that to start with. You may install varying memory sizes in channel A and channel B. The system maps the total size of the lower size channel for the dual channel configuration. Any excess memory from the higher sized channel is then mapped for single channel operation. So for anyone who hasn't read through this stuff many times, that's going to give you a headache. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to try to parse that down right now. Uh, we'll recommend that you install... Not even for me, you won't parse it down? <laughs> well, we, not yet. Not yet. We recommend that you install the memory modules from the blue slots for better overclocking capability. So, which of these... Oh. The blue oh, slots... I, oh, oh, okay. I, Doug, I think I got it. I think I got it. All right. Um, hold on. Do you want to guide me? I'm, to... I'm, I'm looking at the different memory configurations. Nowhere on the different memory configurations on the grid do I see an option for 32 gig. Uh, oh. So the board may the board may only be able to address. Oh wait, no. Oh, no, I goes. saw a place. I saw. A place yeah, I see it. I see it. I see it. And maximum. Got to be 32. That's all. Yeah. No, that's okay. Be too bad. I see how old it. is the board? Or how old is an A an A8 board? Is some I think somewhere between six and eight years old. I think. No, oh. I, I would I think. The, I would doubt the memory would work perfect. Yeah. No. Bronx in chat just said the memory are the same but several years apart. Yeah, so that could be a same. problem too. That could be a problem too. If they're several years apart, they're not really the same. Well, it says uh, all of them have to have the same CAS latency too. If you bought them several years apart. Yeah, they're going to have to. They're going to have to be as exact a match as you possibly can. They have to be the same speed. They probably have to be the same K CAS latency. Right, um, it says that right in the manual, but Doug's showing there. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah same CAS latency. latency. Yeah, but I still, if they're a few years, that many years apart, I bet they are in the yeah. same kind of. Yeah, even yeah, here it says, it says same version date code from the same vendor, so they're really wanting them matched. You're assuming the same vendor. The vendor used the same. Uh, you know, manufacturer. Well, yeah, if they're the same version of date code, then that's going to be the same vendor probably, but... Um, Not years apart, though. Oh, yeah, I years have a question for Doug. Problem. Now, the years apart, if there's if it's years apart between the two pairs, then they could be positioned in the slot so that they're paired together. The memory... They, okay, it did say that, good. Yeah, they, so you should be able to do that. What was that question from somebody? Oh, as soon as you get done with that, I, I do have a question for you. Okay, so we'll, Le legitimately a question. Okay, we'll pursue with this then. Do the memory <laughs> limitation 32-bit Windows OS? We're not using a 32-bit OS, so we don't care about that paragraph. Um, this motherboard does not support DIMMs made up of five to that doesn't matter. Uh, made up? Well, wait a minute. Made up that of might, five that to might. Yeah, because it's the chip. It's talking about the individual chips on the memory board. So if this memory board has a lot of chips on it compared to another one, they may be 512 megabyte chips. Really? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Because you, uh, we're doing, he's got eight megabyte boards. Um, so if he's, it would take eight chips for them to be one megabyte each, so it'd be 16 chips. If he was using five twelve megabyte boards, then they'd have sixteen chips. I don't know that I've ever seen a memory no, board with no, eight on no, each side. So. Eight on one side, yeah. Memory, so I don't think we got that problem. Uh, Interestingly enough, there's only a few combinations on this entire chart that spans what three or four pages. There's only a couple of configurations. That are specified for thirty for thirty two gigabyte. Well, let's and go look. Not at those many first. of them on there. 
So is that this size column right here? I'll give you a few seconds to see where I'm pointing with the mouse. Is that this size? Is that saying total size or is that saying size of the boards? Oh, okay, I see four gigabyte with the number of dims. Okay, so I see. So just scroll down looking for, why would they have two gigab, one, 16 gig, but anyway, yeah, looking for 32 gigabyte. So yeah, if, if you, you want yeah, 32 if you're looking gigabyte, through the list of all the co different combinations, it specifies different speeds of memory. There's only a few, there's only a few places on the, on that entire chart yeah that shows that it will accept 32 gig yeah so here's one here's the first one that i found 32 gig uh is has to you have to have eight gigabyte boards four of them and they have to be corsair this model of corsair 1600 megahertz he yeah, says that's G the first one memory yeah he's, that, oh, he's that, got well that's that could be a problem hang on let's take a look well now what I'll do is I'm going to do Control F and type 32 GB instead of trying to spot it with my eyes. There's only three occurrences of 32 GB according to whoops. I got to move picture in picture. And I'll bet none of them are G skill. Yeah, I'm getting ready to say it didn't look like any of them were G skill. Well, I'm going to I'm going to bounce. Oh, come on. Hey Jim, how old is G skill? G skill's been around for years. They still make it. Oh no, I have G skill. My oh, notebook. Yeah, they they've been around for a while. And they. Okay. So here in the upper right corner, I've searched 32 gigabytes. It shows me there's three of them. It's highlighting one of them right now. So I'm going to click this down arrow. And then so Patriot has a 32 right. combination. Uh, and and it, these checkboxes here, I'm assuming this third column doesn't apply. I'm thinking these checkboxes are, are other configuration. And oh, so one... One, two, or four dims. So the, here's the column headings down in the bottom right corner. You can see just under the picture in picture, under the bottom right corner, one, two, or four dims. That's what these columns mean. So this 32 gigabyte, you can do it with one dim or two dims, but you can't do it with four dims. I don't think that's a correct interpretation because this right here is saying four dims. So am I misinterpreting that? Does that mean the the check the box is uh, disallowed not allowed you have to use four in order to get 32. that's believable i can't imagine that the board with these limitations we've seen can do 32 gigabyte in one uh in one slot so that's telling me you have to have four now let's go to the next one the third well one. The, the reason you probably have to have four is probably because the board will not recognize any dims that are larger than eight gig yeah i think so but now here here that 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 reasoning uh falls through the floor because here this 32 wait a minute that's two gigabytes oh oh it's 32 right here See, it searched for 32, found 32 gig because it's in the part number. That's a two gigabyte item. And so the it, only two that are actually, uh, the, the board says it'll work with are Patriot and Corsair. Right, right. This one is saying that you can have a single board of two gigabytes. And I think you can perhaps put it in any slot. I don't know. Uh, dim support that that that's really irrelevant. So there's only two hits for a 32 gigabyte configuration. It has to be Corsair or Patriot. Well, does it have to be, or does this mean these are the only ones that the manufacturer tested with? Bingo. That's Bingo. the yeah, it's the ones they tested with. These are supported by the motherboard. Right, right. I, yeah. It might work in some other way. So it has he not. told us? Has he told us? the make and model of each of his? They're G-Skill. No, just said G-Skill. G-Skill. So if I do Control F and type uh, G-Skill. That's a lot of entries. G-Skill. Uh, G-Space Skill. Is it G-S-K-I-L-L? -L? How do you spell uh, G-Skill? I think, I think there's a, I think it's G uh, period skill, I think. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I see it once as G period S K I L L. There's only one hit. No, no there is. It shows what twenty five now. Twenty five hits. Yeah. yeah. So this first one, G skill, four gigabytes, uh, two boards of two gigabytes each. So let's go. 
clicking through them. So each time I hit G scale, it's highlighted here. And all we need to do is glance over here and see if there's a 32 bit uh, offering. So there's four gigabyte and we already know it's not going to find it because we didn't find it when we were searching 32 gigabytes. So with the G scale, well now wait a minute, there's a G scale 64 gigabyte. What? Oh, there's a 64 gigabyte for G scale. Where? I'm, I got to go back up and find that one. That's interesting. Yeah, but wait a minute. It says you have to have eight gigabyte boards, eight of them. What? Well, there's not eight slots in the board. There's not eight Either. slots in the board. Yeah, that's screwy. But that, that is, that's the math. Eight gigabytes per board, you need eight of them to reach 64. <laughs> and it has these boxes for each of those one dim, two dim, or four dims, right? Because you need eight dims. Somebody and, was drinking more heavily than I ever had. Can you plug well, them in? Well, maybe that's just. But wait a minute. If you look up the part number, you may find that's a 64 gigabyte kit. That. No, well, it won't maybe, hold all of them, but maybe you could use half of them. Are they, is this a listing that is telling you if you have this model of memory, here's your choices on this motherboard, which means none. Does that mean all of these ones that have three boxes are not usable? I think it means all of them are usable. But you could use one, two, or four dims out of that... And you still have half of them left in that case. So if you well, buy maybe four if, times sixteen, and if you're saying if you buy a sixty-four gigabyte kit, you only put four of them in, you're still going to get sixty-four gigabytes no. because that's what no, you bought. No, you're only going to get the thirty-two, obviously. Can you plug them into USB ports? No, what you're just going to waste the others. <laughs> oh boy. Yes, so is there any other that says 64? Okay, I'm click. Well, I'm clicking through the other G skill, and and I'll search for 64 after I finish G skill. That's a good question, um, because we searched 32 gigabytes. We didn't search 64 yet. So I'm going down G skill. These are four gigabytes. There's lots of G skills. Eight gigabytes, and then G skills uh, one gigabyte. This is back. No, this isn't at the top yet. A nine-year-old motherboard. Nine-year-old motherboard. Did that just this come up? This is an Intel or an AMD. Okay. So that finishes G skill. So then we want to do 64 GB. There's four hits. So here's the G skill. That's the one that we just looked at. Going to the next one. The 64 gigabyte maximum memory capacity can be supported with 16 gigabyte DIMMs or above. All right. Well, yeah, 16 gigabyte DIMMs would work. Asus will update memory QVL qualified vendors list once the DIMMs are available on the market. And that might have happened after the publishing of this manual. Yeah, Vladimir says H6 is for the Xeon boards. H6 is for Xeon boards. Okay, this manual applies for <coughs> Xeon boards as well? It might. Maybe, but it's a very specific model of motherboard. Right. I can't imagine this motherboard model in the upper left corner comes in a four slot configuration and an eight slot configuration. You got to change the model number for that. Yeah. Let's go to the next search for 64 gigabytes. I have I also have a question for for him. Um, when was the last time he tried to update the BIOS on that board? Yeah, an update for the BIOS might might solve this. And changing the slot configurations to try to match the pairs up as much as possible, especially the first numbered slots. I, I, well, whichever are considered the primary slots, which is... Is this an AMD CPU system? Yes. Okay. Well, Aren't they generally more picky about memory than the Intel systems? The Ryzen's are. I can't say specifically for the A series. Okay. Right. Yeah, here's back to his question. He says AMD A8 A8 6600. Okay. And then gives us the motherboard. You, you notice it's talking about 32-bit OS. 
Does, you know, does, does he? What are, the, what are the chances of a bias update on a nine-year-old board? Come on. Uh, it, it, you never know till you try. Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd buy that. I'd, I'd buy it was entirely possible, and entirely possible above the version of BIOS that he currently has. I've got a two-year-old board, and they stopped the BIOS already. Sorry, uh, I, I, I had to lay down. I, it, it, he's trying to upgrade the memory now. Is that what yes. he's doing? Yes, he's trying to go from 16 to 32, and the board mm -hmm. won't recognize anything past 16. But he didn't. He didn't look into this before he started. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm behind. I'm, I'm behind. An hour. I'm not. I'm not sure. My first question is: When was the last time he updated the BIOS, or has he ever updated the BIOS? Oh, I know. I, I, I've I, seen. I agree. I've seen with lots you. of machines come through the shop where these, the, where the BIOS was never updated since the day the machine was was built. Oh, you're right too. And this QVL thing is is almost useless. You know. Uh, it, you know, as you say, it's only with the memory tested, you know, it, and now uh, team memory is getting better and better. And yet they they didn't rank very high on the QBL, QBL list. Well, the list that we're looking at is from a manual that's like nine years old. So, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, Bronx just they, said that the setting the tinkering with the settings is over his head so he might not know how to update the bios if indeed it needs to be done yeah. well my first my first inclination is to find out what version of bios is he is currently on the board number sure. one number number two how my guess away. is also that it's either only one or two revisions past when the board was manufactured so updating the bios may resolve the issue um in if he's not comfortable with doing that then the first thing he's going to have to do is take it to a local shop and see what the what right. they say about the bios. Now, can yeah, somebody I, do a Google search and see what the current bios is? I got it right. I got it right here. I got it right here. Look at your screen. I know I'm behind, but is this oh, okay? Cool. Good job, Doug. I know I'm I'm behind, but is this memory confirmed that it's not in single channel mode? All four <laughs> slots are taken up. Right. So, so, might, so in a way, it shouldn't matter. In the right slot. Okay. Okay, so here's here's his model motherboard right here, and here's his uh, current version of BIOS uh, uh, update available. So March 25th, 2015. Now let's show him how to find out what version of BIOS he currently has. I'm inclined MS Info is a, an easy way to get. That was going to be another question, and then I was going to say maybe you could connect remotely and figure out what's going on. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Okay. The other thing that will give him uh, what BIOS version is CPU ID. Yeah, but he, but the system information is already on his computer. And he built it six we years ago, he said. Yeah. So we don't need to go da uh, uh, download a piece of software to find that because that's built into Windows 10. Um, BIOS mode legacy, well, on this computer, BIOS mode legacy. And then here's BIOS version date. So right here shows a BIOS version number for my computer and a date. So if you come into system information and it's on this summary page looking for BIOS version date. And the way I got to this system information was Windows <coughs> PR and then type MS Info 32. Now there's other ways to get to this. This is just one method to get to this screen. And why that I like somebody just mentioned there's other utility software that will show that to you but this is included in windows 10 so this will just get you straight there right now and so bios version date right there that's where you're gonna see what version you're at now now switching back to chat and see what we got so there's this question looking down for orange stuff um uh yeah we've, that was a while back Printer maintenance, office jack, Carrie's kitchen, RAM slide. Suggest disabling OneDrive and iCloud from Windows startup on stands. Well, that's if we don't want them anymore. We He does use both OneDrive and iCloud, so we don't want to disable them. Um, and, and I would, if I want to re actually have a computer that we don't use it, I'll uninstall Gee. those. It would be my preference rather than disabling them. Um, 
Don't, what's this? Laptop is dirty inside, I'm sure. Pet dander. Yeah, okay. I take dog out. I got to skip over those that are not orange. So I'm looking at the BIOS versions. There's at least four BIOS versions that have to do with memory compatibility. Ah, oh, uh, great. Uh, go for the RGB RAM and light up your life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, yeah, that's the problem. If it doesn't have RGB, that might be your problem. Uh, it's not working. Uh, let's see. And that catches me up. Oh, it's here, Vladimir. Um, version 6504, 2015 date. So this is his BIOS version currently, right? Is that what he's saying? Vladimir is the person that we're working with, right? No. I thought we were working no. on the Bronx. Oh, the Bronx. Vladimir. The Bronx oh, right. 9. So why, oh, why, what is Vladimir talking about there? He's he just, saying that version enhanced memory capability. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Understood. Uh, he's saying gotcha. BIOS needs updated. Gotcha. But do, have we heard from the Bronx what BIOS version he has? 342 he didn't. He just said that's over my head tinkering with settings. That was the last thing he said. And he said he built it about six years ago. Oh, oh he, he, he did it BIOS as well to optimize default. You, you know, know what? what? He uh, all we got to do is steer him to some of Carrie's videos for updating BIOS. I yep. don't think it's going to be as much of a. If he built his computer, it's really not that much of a struggle for you to come up to speed on on how to update the BIOS. Is this an Asus board? It what is what was it? Um, yeah, it's an Asus. Yeah, it's board. an Asus F two. That's one of the easiest ones to buy. Yeah, don't 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 fear that the Bronx. You um, now also the the Bronx. What I do on my channel, since you're since you're not blue yet, um, you may not know this is I'm uh, I'm available to help people um, live where I can connect to your computer, have you on Zoom, and walk you through a process. And I can walk you through that. What we would do, the way we would do that is we would use our cell phone for the Zoom session during the time when your computer's restarting. And well, myself and other people in the Zoom session here we'll, and, the, and the YouTube chat room, we'll walk you right through it. It um, won't take long. No, Sorry. no, no, no what's big the, deal. And what's the possibility it might be, he might get lucky and just do the one click on when he's in the BIOS itself and it'll update yeah, automatically. It might have that. It, 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 that would be dependent upon the version of whether the version of BIOS that he has True. includes that. I think Bronk has been su substantial enough in this uh, session to make him a moderator, don't you? He just said you can connect to my computer remotely. Oh, okay, great. Right. You, um, yeah, I'm short on time. I gotta wrap this up so we can't do that now, but that's great. Yeah, we'd love to do that with you, the Bronk. And you say next Saturday? Yeah. Um, the Bronx, can you send me an email um, and we'll put together a day and time for it. And here's my email address again, dougbetts at livewindowstraining.com. Send me an email so we can directly arrange a, a date and time for that. Oh, that's, but that's my it. ticket said it all day pass again. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting close, Black uh, let's see, Brian, you build yourself, should be able to, yeah, Chris, that was about the laptop I got for free, broken USB parts, DC jack or power cord issue, laptop no good, but I did get a 500 gigabyte SSD, um, so yeah, the Bronchi sent me an email, and, uh, why didn't he come up blue, I guess, maybe I, maybe he sent that before I made him yeah, moderate. Yeah, he did. All right, then, uh, Jim, if you want to send the laptop to, okay, Ar um, Arnold Albert, it just allow, it just to allow more resources to be freed up if and when he oh, needs to was... sync, he can run the app, but disabling from startup allows resources to be used in session. Oh, that's what you're referring to for disabling those from startup. It's just to allow more resources to be free. Yeah, we well, we got him speeded up enough when we fixed the updates that are waiting to be installed and then connected him to Ethernet. And he's got a new computer that's on the way. So we don't really need to go further with that computer. So, you know what? I'm caught up with chat. I want to take this opportunity to end this live stream. We're almost three hours. 
I've got an appointment one hour from now that I need to prepare for, so I've got to go. So. Good evening, Doug. He, he, he has never flashed a BIOS before. I would yeah. assume that would be affirmative that he hasn't. Oh, we, we can get him through that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what we already said. We covered that. So, <laughs> real quick, Stan, I'd like to get with you on Wondershare Femora if you ever find the time because I'm just learning it and would like to get your thoughts on it and how what you're doing with it. Stan, do you want to put your email address in the chat room or handle that otherwise? I can give you Ken's email address directly and you guys get it. Yeah, that's fine. Me. Do that. I, I got no issues with that. All right, that'll, that'll do it. You don't need to put your email in chat, Stan. And the Bronx 9 is now blue. Yeah, there he is. I mainly use my computer for internet banking. All right. Um, wow. A person who only uses a computer for internet banking built his own computer? Wow, that's yeah, okay. Kind of impressed, really. <laughs> uh, 35 concurrent viewers, 21 likes. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Let's say goodbye to everybody. I'm going to go end the zoom meeting and then i'll put in my elevator speech and of course chris ends in a y what <laughs> oh ken said he's streaming tonight inside day. joke yeah ken <laughs> streams any day that ends with a letter y all right uh -oh. <laughs> everybody knows that one ken <laughs> okay <laughs> hey ken you doing tonight let me think about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hold on, let me check the calendar. I'll, hey, Doug, I'll, I'll send you an email on what I was going to bring up because I know you got to run, and I think you will be interested in this. All uh, all of Ken's lives are on speed dial. <laughs> no, I remember him. Doug, end the stream. As Doug tries to end the stream for the fourth time, I'll give you a little <laughs> warning here. Whoops, no, I didn't give you a warning. I just clicked you away <laughs> so here's my email address again um I, I i decided that i want to open up uh the live assistance a little bit so that if a person wants to do a live assistance where i'm creating a video while helping you through something it's i'm not gonna i'm no longer gonna require that that be done during a live stream because i found sometimes it's unfair to the person I'm trying to help to keep turning over to chat. And it's also unfair to chat because I focus on the task at hand. So I'm going to let it be optional. If you want to request a support session during a live stream, then we do that. If you'd rather, it, or if i rather it be a one-on-one -on -one session without live stream, then I'll record it and publish it later. So that's the email address if you'd like to request that session. Now, I don't do free, I'm shaking my head no, I don't do free computer support over email or in the comments on a video. If, you, if, you, if you'd like to ask a question and get my help with it, but you don't want to do a session, quote, you can come into the live stream during a general live stream like this one. You can even come into the Zoom session and ask your question and myself, and the other people who are participating in Zoom, in Zoom and the chat room will be happy to help you if you don't want to actually request a session. So that's okay, too. You saw some of those questions happen today, I think. That does it. I hope this has been useful to you. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.